In a softly lit scene, a pair of legs in laced ballet flats gracefully glide across a shadowy floor. The ruffles of the white dress are carefully broken by movement. A young girl with pink hair and big, expressive eyes is surprised. Her mouth is agape. She stands in a spacious corridor. The light highlights her devastating white dress. With that in mind, she thinks that someone, presumably her father, called her. The same girl runs through the dimly lit hallway, her dress trailing behind her. She thinks aloud about the reason for the call. Approaching the large double doors, the girl pauses, speculation clear on her face. She wonders if the invitation is related to her upcoming birthday, her silhouette small in the space of the room, emphasizing her anticipation. Standing on the threshold, the girl's face is a picture of expected duration. She tentatively calls out to her father, her optimism palpable in the flickering lights that surround her. When the door opens, she is met with the sight of a man sitting in a luxurious room, another standing beside him. Her perspective is from behind, showing her small stature compared to the size of the room and its occupants. The standing man turns to announce the girl's presence, his posture straight and his expression serious. This formal setting hints at a significant and perhaps celebratory event unfolding. The girl, now in the room, seems shocked and confused. As she looks at the shadowy figure, she questions the identity of the man with her father, a combination of fear and curiosity etched on her face. Suddenly, the girl gives up her fear, her face covered in a scream. The hand reaches for her. The action is sharp and disturbing, emphasizing the sharp transition from the previous calm to chaos. Finally, a seated man peers through the window, the silhouette darkening to the light. He thinks about himself, whether the girl is the one, his pose is reflective, and the mood is tense with unanswered questions. The character is overcome with emotion, bemoaning the unfortunate fate of using a magical child for a sinister ritual. The girl's innocence is shattered when she grapples with the word sacrifice, her expression one of horror and disbelief. With tears streaming down her face, she seeks her father's comfort, desperately wondering if her sacrifice would be for the greater good. The man's disgruntled grip and darting gaze speak volumes for his determination, signaling the harsh reality the girl must face. As her birthday approaches, she is haunted by memories of rejection and reminders of the deep love she once felt. Fast forward six years. The quaint town square bustles with life, starkly contrasted with the girl's solemn memories. The red-haired girl is jolted out of her thoughts by a sudden interruption, her startled face reflecting her surprise. Fiery and outspoken, the young girl faces ridicule with fierce determination, her tenacity shining through. The girl, now facing a group of curious onlookers, keeps her cool as her identity as a victim is scrutinized. In a stone cell, a girl with troubled brown eyes begs for mercy, while a redhead wraps her arms protectively around her, urging the invisible to give up. Rude stands tall, snuggling the girl beside her as she urgently announces their noble bond with the Marquis of the North, pleading with the surrounding crowd for understanding amid the commotion. Under the threat of being kidnapped by a mutiny, the Orr values her as a valuable commodity, his words testifying to a dark fate. Fear and disbelief flash across her face as she realizes their danger. The girl, small but fierce, bites the hand of her assailant with a determined sneer. His scream fills the air, an echo of both pain and surprised outrage. Moving on to the girls, their laughter is harsh. They comment on the young man's cruel spirit, their words dripping with cruel intent. The larger man looms over the redhead, his voice demanding submission as she resists, her expression determined against his intimidation. Swift retribution comes as the redhead slams a palm into her encounter's nose. The crack of impact is sudden and sharp, a key turning point in a gloomy scene. Cater stumbles back, hand flying to his nose, his pained expression a silent testament to the redhead's unexpected power, a moment that shifts the power dynamic. After the strike, there is a disorientated, agape mouth as the audience realizes that the redhead is not easy prey, their blow palpable in the dusty air. A bald man clutches his face, eyes wide in shock and agony. Around him, reality begins among the witnesses. Women should not be underestimated. A hooded figure stands tall, basking in the soft glow of sunset, the cityscape in the background emitting an almost ethereal light. With a sharp turn of her head, a girl with striking red eyes and flowing red hair looks over her shoulder, her expression a combination of surprise and fear. 
In a tense confrontation, a bald man steps forward with a knife aimed at the cloaked figure, his face contorted with aggression as he shouts his intent. An examination of the cloaked figure's eye reveals a determined look as they turn gracefully to counter the incoming attack, their cape sharply piercing. The bald man ends up being flipped hard, the speed and strength of the hooded figure's response sending him crashing to the ground. The closing figure strides off, leaving the dead man behind, his cape quivering with an air of finality to the encounter. Viewed through the peering eye, the figure's eye reveals a calm yet sharp intensity, hinting at the controlled power behind their folded facade. The testimony of the event unfolds, two children huddle in fear, one hugging the other. Elderly, with deep red hair, a clean-cut figure alert, fear etched into her face. The girl holds the younger child tightly, her eyes wide with fear and betrayal as she accuses the figure of malevolence, her protective instincts flaring up. Amidst a warm sunset, a concerned young man with blonde hair asks someone in a frame if they are okay, his headphones dangling by his side. A young woman with strawberry blonde hair assures that even though it's not safe here, she will escort the person to their home, her eyes filled with caring determination. The scene cuts to the serene exterior of an elaborate, multi-story building set against a twilight sky. The girl, her hair black and her eyes shining, excitedly thanks someone for the food as she sits in front of a rich and colorful feast, ready to dive in. As the girl confuses her dish with a rush, the pink-haired lady watches with a mixture of amusement and affection, her own fork stopping in midair. Gratitude is extended by the pink-world masked woman named Mr. Rin, noting that he is the first to help them without asking for anything in return. Enjoying a bite, the pink world lady is surprised to be reminded that they have somewhere to go, her expression a mix of surprise and investigation. A man with sleek black hair is in a moment of introspection, his thoughts on the strangeness of walking with a stranger, a gesture of vulnerability revealed as he shakes the back of his neck. The same rosy worldly lady is puzzled when she remembers that she imagined herself with each other, she is Rena, her tone mixed with confusion and a hint of realization. The man, revealed as Rin, acknowledges their mutual introduction, but complains that names alone do not diminish their status as strangers, his demeanor displaying a combination of resignation and thoughtfulness. The pink-haired girl seems surprised by the boy's remark as he holds his fork uncontrollably, suggesting a casual or dismissive attitude. At the dinner table, a pink-haired girl looks worried as she looks at a boy who is indulging in a hearty meal. The atmosphere suggests that an important conversation is taking place over dinner. A young man with dark hair expresses his feelings by raising his hand as if to emphasize his point. His serious expression suggests that he is discussing a matter of some importance. The pink-skinned girl speaks with a tone of authority, perhaps catching up to the young girl eating in front of her. Her posture and the content of her speech convey a combination of sternness and instruction. A tense moment unfolds as the pink world girl leans forward with a pointed question about family relationships. Her intense gaze and surrounding movement lines indicate a significant revelation or accusation. Surprise is visible on the face of a dark-skinned young man when he learns new information about a family connection that seems to have caught him off guard. With a serious demeanor, the pink-skinned girl confirms the fact by smoking a pipe. Her composed posture suggests that she is in a position of knowledge or authority on the matter. The young man ponders the revelation about the unexpected baby, his furrowed brows and contemplative expression suggesting he is trying to make sense of the news. The conversation takes a turn when the pink world girl is surprised to hear a question about coming home, a topic that seems to come out of the blue for her. Rin explains her reluctance to return home by alluding to the chaotic life and potential trouble that awaits, perhaps hinting at past events that could return. A man with dark hair and intense eyes appears restless, biting his thumb as he thinks deeply. The text suggests that he is dealing with a difficult situation. A young woman with pink hair and eyes looks shocked. The dialogue reveals that she is called beautiful, a statement that seems to have caught her off guard. The enticing image shows pink skin surrounded by ominous hands reaching for her. The dialogue expresses the harsh reality that her beauty makes her a target for those who would exploit her for gain. The man appears again, this time in a thoughtful pose, his hand over his mouth. He reflects on the many people who ask for payment in exchange for helping. The woman's face is drawn with a frown. The dialogue bubble shows her considering the concept of payment, perhaps realizing the weight of the man's previous display. 
The man shows a moment of awareness, his hand touching his neck, as if something has just been pushed on him, related to the woman's perspective on payment. In a powerful stance, the man stands with his sword at his side, conveying a sense of readiness and determination, perhaps to defend or fight. The twisted face of the woman captures her solemn expression, hinting at the depth of emotion and determination behind her pensive eyes. The focus shifts to a beautifully detailed sword, a symbol of action and nobility, hinting at a significant moment of decision or confrontation. Rin stands protectively over the woman, offering safety and reassurance in a world that offers threats of danger. A woman with pink hair looks surprised as she holds the phone while a dark-haired man talks to her. The text says that it is asking something to be used or applied. A cloaked man holds a dagger over his open palm, saying if one thing happens, action must follow, implying a conditional threat or test. The woman looks at the jumping hands with a worried expression as the man points the dagger towards himself, indicating that he is ready to perform a serious deed. A distressed man turns away, his movements swift, creating a sense of urgency or conclusion to previous actions. The pink skin smiles, content in its expression, while the man's voice plays in the background, indicating a change in mood or a response to his actions. The man who appears seems puzzled and slightly shaken, asking a question that suggests confusion or concern, perhaps about the woman's behavior. The woman is seen with a warm smile against the background of a window, with text that emphasizes something beautiful that speaks of admiration or a positive revelation. A close-up of the man reveals his surprise and emotion, his gaze tense and directed beyond the panels, suggesting a reaction to something unexpected or significant. The woman is glowing with happiness, her eyes are closed and a carefree expression on her face, and the man is standing nearby, the contrast between their emotions palpable. The man looks surprised, sweat on his brow as he questions the woman's intentions or words, clearly unsettled or caught off guard. In a cozy, dimly lit room, Ren, with pink hair and a happy expression, playfully closes her eyes and smiles widely, teasingly suggesting that she might not be the sharpest tool in the shed. Rin, a man with short black hair, looks at her with an unreadable expression. A sporty interior view of the room shows a neatly set table under the soft glow of candles, with two chairs inviting quiet conversation. The scene outside the window suggests a cold night calling for warmth inside. Rena lies down, eyes closed, and a carefree look on her face. A big, bold onomatopoeia looms over it, suggesting a sudden sound or action that disturbs the peace. A moment later, charged with tension, Rin puts a finger to his lips, signaling Reno to be quiet. The urgency in his eyes speaks volumes as Rena looks at him, her eyes wide with sudden concern. Rena sits down in bed, the question forming on her lips. Do you need to run away now? Her face is a combination of anxiety and anticipation, emphasizing the gravity of the situation unfolding around them. Rin, with firm understanding, urges Ren to hide under the bed. The command is clear and simple, but it carries with it the danger that makes Ren a heart race. The urgency in Rena's voice is palpable as he insists that Rena move quickly. Her eyes are wide, showing shock at the command as she tries to comply. A stormy man bursts into the room, demanding to know where Rena is. His aggressive stance and backup uniformed officers emphasize that Rin and Ren are in danger. The man, eyes filled with rage, accuses Rin of being the murderer. Tensions mount as a confrontation seems inevitable and Ren's safety hangs in the balance. In a crescent of rage, the man demands Ren's return, believing Rin to be her killer. The situation threatens misunderstandings and the potential for violence. Rin, a man with short black hair, seems skeptical when he confronts another character noting that they are obviously lying. His expression is tense, suggesting a high-stakes conversation. The bald man clutches the knife with a menacing grin, clearly threatening not to regret future actions. His aggressive demeanor suggests that he should not be healed, and he seems to relish the upcoming confrontation. Rin looks on in shock, his eyes wide as the object violently lunges at him. His surprise indicates that the attack is unexpected, putting him on the defensive. A hand grips a glowing blue stone, the magical symbols inscribed on it pulsing with power. Blood drips from the fingers, hinting at a ritual or sacrifice that has just taken place. Rin, with a serious expression, prepares to throw something with great force. His focus and determination is palpable as he takes action to change the course of the meeting. A large, monstrous creature emerges with bared fangs, flaunting that it doesn't order around. 
His appearance is formidable, and he exudes a sense of fury and raw power. Rin, eyes narrowed in a combination of fear and determination, draws his sword as he faces an unseen threat. The determination on his face says that he is ready to fight, no matter the odds. The hard creature roars aggressively, pulling Rin out. The intense confrontation is emphasized by the creature's ferocious expression and overwhelming presence. In a dynamic encounter, Rin dodges an attack from a giant beast, lines of motion emphasizing the speed and danger of the moment. His agility is his ally in this dangerous battle dance. Rin stands ready in a defensive stance, his sword pointed at the beast. His posture speaks of readiness to participate in a decisive battle, with determination to emerge victorious. Rin, a man with short black hair, stands defensively with a sword in hand, while Rina, a girl with pink hair, appears surprised, her arms spread out as if in shock. He shouts, Stop! as she pleads, Please stop being afraid. Rina, with flowing pink hair, looks terrifying as a monstrous creature looms over her. Rin stands guard with his back to her, facing the threat head on, sword at the ready as he defiantly yells at the beast. A voice taunts from the shadows as the three figures approach. Rin engages the beast with determination, striking it fiercely while Rina watches from behind. The creature seems to be at a disadvantage against Rin's brutality. Eyes were wide with fear and determination. She demands, Stop right now! I will never forgive you for your foul language and insults. The text suggests her indignation before the violence unfolds. The tension builds when one of the men, bald and tattooed, responds with a startling, What? while his companion watches with apprehension. Mood is sudden surprise and confusion. In a dramatic confrontation, Rin bravely fights the beast. Rina looks back, looking unpleasant and helpless as the creature sways violently, eyes glowing red with malice. Amidst the chaos, Rin, sword at the ready, looks shocked as the creature is defeated. The intensity of the moment is captured by his wide-eyed expression. With determination, Rin confronts the beast, its essence dissipating around him. He stands wounded but victorious, his sword dripping from the battle. Rina, now in a counter stance, points her weapon forward with a focused gaze. Her hair will be disheveled as she prepares to take action, standing strong in the face of danger. Rina, a girl with pink hair, stands in the shadows, her white dress smeared with red at the hem. Clasping a sharp object in her hand, her eyes show a mix of emotions. Her straight hair dances around her face, partially obscuring her expression. Two men, one bald and the other wearing a cap, look shocked as they look up. Their faces contort with fear and surprise, perhaps revealing something they didn't expect. The rain seems to be falling harder, emphasizing the gravity of the situation they find themselves in. Rin, a man with short black hair, looks stunned, eyes wide and mouth slightly open. He seems to have just seen something disturbing, rain cascading down his face reflecting the shock in his eyes. Rena is visibly closed, her eyes tense, and her lips curved into a slight smile. She speaks confidently, implying that she sees through the facades around her. The name Rena is cremated below, emphasizing her presence, and possibly her importance in this scenario. For once, her eyes glistening with mischief as she speaks again. This time, her words carry a tone of amusement, suggesting that she finds others' naivety endearing or beneficial. Her seemingly innocent smile hides many secrets behind it. A wounded hand reaches for a mysterious stone with an intricate blue design, as if trying to grasp or activate it. The two uniformed and fox-clad figures look surprised at the glowing blue entity emanating from the device, illuminating the dark surroundings. The bald man screams in agony as blue energy whips around his arm, his expression twisted in pain and shock. A figure with sunken red eyes and a malevolent expression is seen strangling Rin, who is in visible distress. A mysterious energy swirls around them. Rina looks up with wide eyes reflecting a blue glow, her face showing a combination of worry and determination. Rina stands firm and determined, her long pink hair flowing surrounded by a glowing blue light that contrasts sharply with the dark background. A bald man flows forward with a terrifying expression, eyes glowing red as he is enveloped in blue energy. Rina, her hair holding her back, delivers a powerful blow to the bald man, whose face registers the shock and pain of the impact. Rina stands over the defeated bald man, her presence commanding the rain, adding a somber tone to the scene. 
Rena stands amid the chaos, her gaze locked on something beyond the panels as the uniformed figures look on in surprise. Rena, with flowing pink hair, looks shocked as she claims that it's not safe to eat anything you find. Her wide eyes glinted with concern in the dim light. Kneeling down, Rena asks since when a person makes a so-called sacrifice. Nearby, two men, police officers, are surprised as they look at someone lying on the ground. Her gaze intense. Rena questions if her statement was heard clearly. Her arms crossed as she stands under the pale light. Her expression a combination of determination and curiosity. Amid a scene of confusion, the man explains that it's been three months since the body was accidentally found, the words leaving his mouth with a tone of disbelief. With a twinkle of triumph, Rena declares as she finishes, holding a flashlight in the dusky atmosphere, her pink eyes reflecting the light. Rena stands her ground, letting the gentlemen know that they must take responsibility for their content as the men stare into the dawning realization of their situation. The image captures a girl in a sudden transformation, her hair now black and short, crawling out from under the bed. The girl comforts herself by saying that mistakes can always be corrected. Her eyes, filled with determination, look at the brighter result. The men caught in the guard look at Ren's outstretched, empty hands in a mixture of surprise and confusion as a dynamic light surrounds them. In a magical twist, Rena, with a playful twinkle in her eye, sweetly asks for all they have, her hands open and ready to receive. In a well-lit room, Rin, with a skeptical attitude, confronts Rena about their previous experiences, questioning whether her actions were all for show. Rena looks around in surprise, caught off guard by the aftermath. Rena, rock in hand, refutes Rin's suggestion of weakness by emphasizing her commitment to proper social behavior. Rin absorbs his words, face a combination of doubt and contemplation. The atmosphere becomes tense as Rin, with a hint of frustration, Ren's questionable actions regarding the gift of bananas, suggesting that it may be too polite or a sign of timidity. In a contrasting scene, a moody figure with horns and a broom stands in silence while Reina sits nearby, her posture and expression reflecting frustration and vulnerability. The girl with the unkempt hair is asserting the importance of her actions, Renault's decision, and alluding to the wider group of well-behaved girls who can benefit from the situation. A pragmatic discussion unfolds as a character with a broom lectures about the need for fair compensation for their efforts and cost management. Rin is visibly shocked, tugging at the bead on his forehead as he reacts to the unexpected utterance of a strong word, and Rena watches as her expression is a mix of amusement and surprise. Rena teases Rin about her choice of words, coward, among them, which seems to strike a nerve, leaving Rin speechless and confused by her bluntness. Rin stands in a moment of realization, realizing that Ren never asked for help, a thought that seems to weigh heavily on him. The scene climaxes as Ren's dagger plummets to the floor, symbolizing a pivotal moment of tension and unspeakable conflict between her and Rin. In the dimly lit room, Ren, with her pink hair, watches in surprise as Rin, a man with short black hair, pins her down for protection. He assures her it's for safety, his face partially obscured by the shadow of his hood, as the scene escalates, Rin, his expression serious and determined, gives Ren permission to stab him if she feels threatened, showing his trust in her. His dark cloak contrasts with the warm glow of the background. Rin feels a sudden jolt of pain, squinting as if struck by an invisible force. His discomfort is obvious, but he tries to hide it from Ren, showing his resilience. Rina, dressed in a white and green Victorian outfit, watches Rina's discomfort with concern. He brushes it off, trying to keep his sanity, hinting at his desire not to worry about her. At a key moment, Rena is holding a mysterious stone that pulsates with blue runes. She questions its meaning, referring to it as a case they discussed earlier, indicating a joint quest or investigation between them. Surrounded by an ominous aura, several identical stones with glowing runes are revealed to be sacrificial devices. This ominous revelation hints at a darker side to their journey. A gruesome scene unfolds with zombie-like creatures emerging around a cursed stone said to have changed the course of human history, a grim reminder of the dangers they face. Along the way, Rin learns of a victim in the city and an ongoing investigation, hinting at a deeper narrative intertwined with their quest. Rin reflects on her vulnerability, challenging his previous assumption that Rina is naive. This introspection reveals his evolving perception of her. Rena claims ownership of the mysterious object, her expression swift and determined. 
She challenges Rin, asking if he intends to return it, setting the stage for a potential conflict or resolution between them. Rin, with short black hair, stands with a serious expression in hands as he states something important, though he intends not to push it too hard. Rina, a girl with pink hair, looks surprised and a little confused, staring wide-eyed and open-mouthed. In another moment, Rena is smiling warmly, a knowing look on her face as she lightly touches her breast with her hand. Rin appears to be a bit lethargic and blushes a bit when Rina, looking into his eyes, compliments him for real, causing a soft smile to escape him. Rina comes forward, admitting that there was no need for rescuing, but she appreciated Rina's kindness. Rin gratefully offers Rina a decorated, glowing stone as a promised reward for her kindness. Rin's eyes widen in shock, clutching the stone a little tighter, obviously surprised by the object's significance. Rina gratefully accepts the stone, stating that she would gladly receive it, but also implies that it is too valuable a reward for her kindness alone, hinting at reciprocity in her own way. With a gentle smile and a gracious bow, Rena tells Rin that she awaits his return, assuming he must be on his way. Rin, surprised, expresses that he cannot accompany Rena further as he has other companions, perhaps feeling a combination of duty and pity. Rena, a girl with long pink hair, stands with a gentle expression, her gaze soft and distant. She seems to be having a quiet moment to herself. Rin, a man with short black hair, stands in the room looking slightly confused. His formal attire conveys a certain seriousness, and his hand rests on the hilt of his sword, indicating readiness for action. Rina turns her head slightly, a smug smile on her face, her eyes half-closed in an expression of confidence. She seems to be responding to an offhand comment or entertainment situation. With an air of finality, Rina returns to the exit, stating that they will see each other in the courtyard. Her posture speaks of a combination of determination and unevenness, suggesting that she is used to taking charge. Rin is caught off guard, his eyes wide with surprise. There's a sense of surprise in his reaction, perhaps to Ren's sudden decision or surprising revelation. A bird's-eye view of the city, with its neat rows of houses and surrounding wall, presents a serene and orderly environment, with a sense of peaceful everyday life within its confines. A lone figure walks away from the viewer towards the military camp. The setting is peaceful, with tents and structures blending into a lush green landscape. In a tense moment, a group of armored knights surround a mysterious glowing stone on the ground. Their attention and formation allow us to assume the importance and potential danger of the object. Rin stands decked out in ceremonial military uniform, a look of determination on his face. The grandeur of his attire and the brilliant light around him lends a magical, commanding aura to his presence. Rin, a man with short black hair, stands with a thoughtful look. His bright eyes contrast with his dark clothes, and there is a sense of seriousness about him. Inside the tent, Rin addresses a group of armored soldiers. He questions the progress of the investigation, pointing to his leadership role in the matter. Outside, a man with green hair loudly announces the findings of the investigation as Rin, in a fur cloak, listens from behind, exuding calm authority. Rin rides a horse with a purposeful expression as it runs near the landscape. His posture is upright and determined, suggesting a sense of urgency. Two horses gallop fiercely, their hooves raising a cloud of dust. The energy and chaos of the scene reflect a moment of intense action. Rin, in full armor, leads the charge on horseback. The mass of soldiers behind him indicates his command and the gravity of the situation they face. In a softly lit room, Rina, a woman with pink hair, offers a compliment to Rin, revealing a personal connection between the two. Rin stands in the shadows, a crooked smile on her face. His response to Renault suggests a shared understanding, hinting at the layers of complexity in his character. Rina looks wide-eyed, expressing caution about what she sees as dangerous. The text around her frames her as both delicate and receptive. Rena stands accused with Rin facing us. Despite the tension, there is an air of dramatic irony as she faces the consequences of actions that seem characteristic of her. Rin, a man with short black hair, stands in profile, lost in thought. He wonders how anyone would react if they knew he was the heir to the eastern lands. While driving through the forest, Rin is approached by a man with short blonde hair who asks if anything good has happened. Rin's expression is thoughtful, and he seems caught off guard. The blonde remarks that Rin seems to be in a good mood, to which Rin responds with a sense of irony, hinting that the situation may not be as pleasant as it seems. 
There is a brief moment of awkward silence between Rin and the blonde man. Rin looks away, deep in thought, while the other man waits for an answer. Rin and the blonde lead a procession of soldiers on horses through the forest. The man addresses Rin with respect, acknowledging his high status. Rin rides his horse, deep in contemplation, asking if the blonde's daughter has a daughter, which seems to be an important topic for him. The blonde seems surprised when Rin asks if Marquis Rubel of the Northern Lands is referring to her. He notes the strained relations between the North and the West. The blonde hesitates to answer Rin's inquiry about his daughter, revealing that she died years ago, which lends a somber mood to the conversation. The blonde man regains his composure by explaining that the daughter's name was Renault or something similar, recalling the past with a touch of sadness in his eyes. Rin stands before the warrior with a stern expression, declaring his previous faith in her as virtuous, only to discover that she is actually a ghost. He is visibly shocked, the revelation evident in his eyes. In the next moment, looking slightly puzzled, Rin reflects on Reno's visions of ghosts, wondering if he really saw what was real. He concludes to wait for their next meeting for answers. The fight scene is where Rin differs, charging forward as opposed to the spectral soldiers in the background, offering a mix of ethereal and real in this fight. The next look switches to a carefree setting, with Clapbird running through the wood. The trainer is focused on the road ahead, oblivious to the ghostly soldiers seen earlier. Inside the carriage, Reyna looks lost in thought. Her reflection in the window juxtaposes her actual presence, hinting at her ghostly nature. Rena sits opposite the young maid in the carriage. They chat casually as Rena comes across as dignified, and the maid seems taken aback by the noble aura of her company. The young maid looks curiously at Rin, who is standing outside the carriage. His confused appearance contrasts with the elegance of the carriage, piqued her curiosity. Rena looks at a mixture of surprise and recognition, as if she's just realized something important about Rena or their circumstances together. Finally, Rin stands shrouded in shadow, his face half-closed, suggesting a mysterious future meeting with Reyna, while she sits passively, offering patience and contemplation. In a quiet moment, Rena sits next to a striking maid inside the carriage, her calm demeanor a stark contrast to the maid's agitation. Rena, a girl with pink hair, sits comfortably by the window, enjoying the sunlight and the view of the countryside below. Beside her, a younger girl with short black hair looks surprised as she lets out a simple, ah, the younger girl with a puzzled expression as she earnestly asks Ren how to start a conversation with someone in the yard, clearly looking for advice. Rena answers thoughtfully, beginning to explain the proper way to greet someone and ask how they are doing. The younger girl listens intently, her eyes wide in anticipation of the next part of Ren's lesson. A learning moment is captured as the younger girl leans forward, eager to learn more. Rena offers to give the man a chance, which confuses the young girl, reflected in her repetition of the word chance. Rena, with a finger to her lips in a reflective pose, signaling she's thinking about what to say next. In the final image, Rena concludes her advice with the importance of giving someone a chance to apologize. Her expression is carefree and wise, as if imparting an important life lesson to the younger girl. In the manner, the story presents Ren, who lived alone, surrounded by nature. Following the advice of her elders, the Viscount's wife divorced her daughter, separating herself to ensure a proper upbringing for the successor. Rena, a young girl with pink hair, seems lost and out of place in her grand surroundings, juxtaposing her innocence with the expectations placed upon her. In the midst of a heated argument, the lady in green madly takes her hand away from the gentleman, suggesting a deep rift or discord in the family. Little Reyna is depicted as always surrounded by loneliness, standing small in the vast courtyard of her large estate. Referring to the portrait of her parents, Reyna continues the day when she can be with them again, feeling their absence deeply. The child expresses boredom and loneliness, speaking with a lack of maternal and paternal affection. Time passes, and Reyna grows up amid the expectations of her sixth year of life, still seemingly isolated but ready for change. Suddenly, a prince arrives from the main residence, hinting at a significant turn in Ren's isolated existence. Overjoyed, Rena finally returns home, offering a reunion and a new chapter in her life. A young girl with pink hair stands with a bright and excited expression. She is dressed in an elaborate blue dress decorated with ruffles and lace, looking impatient and a little nervous, as if she is at an important event, perhaps a ceremony or celebration. The pair stand together, an air of elegance around them, 
They seem to be Ren's parents, looking even more impressive than she ever imagined, as indicated by the text bubble inviting Ren to come over. Rena, with pink hair decorated with a blue flower, stands expressionless, but her eyes are full of tears. She wears a necklace and a light blue dress with a bow and a jewel. A delicate hand is visible, part of a graceful pose adorned with pearls as it lifts the hem of an elegant flowing dress. The dress has a regal quality to him. Rena humbly greets her parents in a lush field, looking down with a slight bow. She introduces herself by name, the air around her calm and serene. With bright eyes, Rena believes that every day will be filled with love or happiness. Her pink hair frames her face as she puts on a heartfelt look. A carriage drawn by horses heads down a dirt path, seemingly leaving or approaching an estate. With the driver focused in front, the surroundings bathed in the glow of a peaceful day. Inside the vehicle, Rena sits pensively with her finger to her mouth, while the eared maid reacts excitedly, indicating that they can already see the mansion in the distance. The majestic castle stands tall against the clear blue sky, with birds flying around. The architecture is elaborate, signaling a grand event or a substantial residence. Two women, one with long brown hair, both wearing flower crowns and white dresses, share a joyful moment under a clear sky. Laughter and happiness are evident in their postures. Two women, now joined by a man, admire the fountain. The pearls and flows of the dress suggest a celebratory or special occasion, and the man seems to welcome or direct them. In conversation with her maid, Rena seems surprised or hesitant about what the maid is excitedly pointing out, possibly regarding the activities at the large estate they are visiting. A boisterous crowd gathers outside a grand ornate building adorned with statues and banners. The atmosphere is filled with anticipation, and the grandeur of the architecture hints at an important event. A young girl with the ears of a fantasy servant looks out of the carriage window, worried about the time, declaring that it will be night by the time they get through the line. Inside the carriage, a servant girl and a pink world girl named Reyna discuss their weight. The servant expresses urgency, to which Rena responds with a confused, what? Rena holds up the invitation with the fancy seal and comments in surprise that the invitation that was in her bag is exactly what they need. Handing the invitation to the guard from the carriage, the servant girl apologizes for not recognizing him, and the guard accepts the document. Karana is welcomed to a celebration for the Empire when she arrives at the palace. The servant girl eagerly demands to be let through. Upon entering the palatial ballroom of the palace, the servant girl exclaims in apprehension, her excitement palpable as she receives in the grand setting. The servant girl dangles from the chandelier in a comical escape as Rena calmly walks below, oblivious to the shenanigans above. In the hallway, Rena stops a woman who asks if they are going to see the lady of the house. Rena explains that the lady summons them if necessary, and they have other plans. These descriptions offer a glimpse into the graphic novel's narrative, showing elements of character interaction, setting, and plot development. Rena, with her long pink hair, looks slightly surprised and confused by the question of her servant, who is a girl with cat features. Rena declares her intention to search for her father, her expression determined, and her posture braced for the confrontation that may await her. The scene cuts to a grand doorway guarded by two halberd-wielding guards who stand firm, blocking the path with crossed arms. Rena, unidentified, presents the article to the guards. Her face is determined, suggesting that the document carries an order that she expects to obey. The guards, unperturbed by the contents of the letter, deny its release. Ren's disappointment is palpable, her previous confidence now numbed by this rejection. The camera focuses on Rennie, her gaze now softer, reflecting a mix of hope and anticipation as she waits for the guard's reaction to the letter. Despite the authoritative message, the guards remain unmoved, their armor forming a barrier to Ren's progress. A prominent older man appears, probably a figure of authority. His presence suggests that he may have the final say in Ren's requests. In a grand room with daylight streaming in through large windows, Rena sits across from a gray man, the two engaged in a quiet but meaningful conversation. Confused, Rena asks her husband how he is feeling, recalling the passage of time, suggesting a reunion after a long separation. A man in a suit becomes agitated, questioning his own actions and complains that he feels dead inside. His emotions intensify. Rena, shocked and with a touch of sadness, can't believe that the man doesn't acknowledge her, her face showing a combination of confusion and pain. 
Rena recalls with childlike innocence her decision to cover the stairs with carpet, oblivious to the consequences of her actions. The man's memory of stumbling down the carpeted stairs is vivid, his past embarrassment hinted at the presence of looks. Rena, smaller in stature, pleads over the man standing high on the stairs, the difference in height emphasizing her youthful naivety and his mature authority. From a bird's eye view, we see the aftermath of Wren's carpeting, a comical cascade of tumblers, including the man, each comically unable to navigate the treacherous steps. Rena is looking to the side. Her expression is calmly contemplative, perhaps reminiscent or reconciliation with the past. The man currently sitting looks uncomfortable as he asks Rena if she has heard of a certain event, his face showing serious concern. In the great room, Rena sits tensely on the couch, her husband standing with his back to her delivering the grim news. Their lady is dead. Wren's eyes, fixed on the floor, reflect a mixture of shock and contemplation. Butler turns to Renault, suggesting that she has a long journey ahead of her, and advises her to drink tea before leaving. Rena remains seated, her gaze downcast, and her thoughts elsewhere. A servant prepares the tea service, as the butler confidently asserts that he can do it himself. His polished professionalism masks an underlying concern. As Butler serves the tea, he is struck by a sudden, painful memory— Rena watches, the weight of the situation reflected in her immobility. A close-up reveals the butler's trembling hands as he clutches the pendant, his self-confidence beginning to crumble under the emotional strain. An elegant cup is interrupted, its contents flowing out in a plume of white, a stark contrast to the tranquility of the setting. In the dim evening light, Butler wonders aloud why he always believed in things that never passed, his silhouette casting a long shadow across the decorated room. Rena looks on calmly, the large cup in front of her acting as a barrier. It remains a portrait of limitation amid the unfolding of events. Wren's expression hardens as she conveys a sense of resignation, acknowledging that her words have no effect on their reality. Finally, when the butler pours the tea, he provides a relay message, a simple greeting and inquiry into someone's well-being, an attempt to bridge the gap of their current separation. Rena, with striking pink hair, sits leisurely, her hands cupped around her cup. She wonders out loud what might happen if she were caught in the gang's hideout, a notion that seems to amuse her as much as the tea that confuses her. A close-up reveals the character, brow furrowed and sweat-drenched, obviously concerned about Ren's hypothetical scenario. The anxiety is palpable, suggesting a deep concern for Ren's safety or reputation. Rena assures a casual remark, a sly smile on her face, deflecting the tension with her playful curiosity about the gang situation, spreading the care that was building. In a moment of peace, Rena sips her tea. Sky after sky is a canvas of peace. The act is simple, but it carries the weight of the previous conversation as it remains composed. The cup looms dangerously over the edge of the table, its precarious position a silent but powerful metaphor for the situation. Ren finds himself balancing between danger and self. Rena and the man are caught in a stunning descent, their bodies parallel to the ground far below. The sudden fall speaks volumes about the sudden shifts in Ren's world. A maid with cat ears enters the stage. Her expression is one of surprise. She hadn't expected Rena to come back so soon, her face showing her surprise and maybe a hint of worry. Inside the bathroom, the maid reaches out to Ren, who splashes her face. Whether seeking solace or simply washing away worries, a gesture is a moment of vulnerability. Sitting on the wet floor, Ren's laughter echoes off the walls, a sign that even after the shock, she finds a way to laugh, her spirit untainted by circumstances. Rena, still grounded but ever playful, teases the maid about devouring all the bread, her words light-hearted despite the recent chaos. It is a teasing accusation that speaks of their familiar report. Rena, the pink-haired girl, looks upset and wonders if she could turn down a request from someone important. Her eyes are sad and reflective, indicating a deep sense of obligation. The atmosphere turns dark and ominous as Rena lies on the ground, eyes closed, motionless. The text speaks of a silent and powerful darkness, hinting at some danger that could paralyze if ignored. Rena laughs, but the laugh seems forced and lacks joy. It is clear that something is wrong. Her behavior masks her true feelings with a facade of humor. The maid, with distinctive animal ears, is surprised by Ren's laughter, questioning what is wrong. She seems genuinely worried, and Ren's laugh continues to sound hollow. On a lighter note, the maid asks if Rena has met her father. 
Reina, sitting on the ground, informs her that a courtier has come instead, hinting at some aristocratic involvement in her predicament. The maid explains that she went to a lot of trouble just to bring one note, but she felt it was very thorough. This suggests that a significant message was delivered with a note. As they discuss the contents of the note, the maid expresses her belief that the line about not using her father's absence to her advantage speaks more of malice than care. Rena reflects on the phrase, parental loss means wound. She interprets this as a possible expression of concern, suggesting that the writer may still care about unity. In a moment of vulnerability, Rena is willing to believe that the sender of the note feels some guilt, even if it's not much, showing her desire for emotional connection and understanding. Finally, the maid looks at Rena with a mixture of hope and skepticism, doubting if she really believes the words. It means that there is a slim chance that the words will be sincere, which represents the one in a million hope. The pink-haired Rena expresses her disappointment and sense of defeat, saying that this is why she was enlightened, but then felt as if she had been attacked. Rena stands elegantly in the opulent room, her gaze off to the side, reflecting on the past events with a mixture of wonder and contemplation in her eyes. In a light-hearted moment, Rena throws back her head in laughter as she shares a funny tale about trying to pass the gas discreetly, comparing her defeat to the cornered party. The maid is confused and questions whether she should continue cooking, her expression a combination of confusion and eagerness to please. Rena leans gracefully back on the chaise long as she talks to her servant about someone's efforts that were so sincere she couldn't refuse them, and she adds that there's no danger of death in this case. The maid, surprised and worried, mutters to herself, wondering if even if someone doesn't die. Her mind lags as she contemplates the gravity of the situation. Rena bursts out laughing, clutching her stomach as an uncontrollable fit consumes her, her body shaking with every smile as the maid looks on, confused. Rena reassures her worried servant, stating that they will most likely come to check on her tomorrow, her tone reassuring but firm. With a serious expression, Rena advises her maid that it is important to visit and say goodbye for the first time, saying goodbye for the first time, implying that a different approach is needed. Rena ponders the possibility of someone being the killer, her face stoic but revealing a hint of underlying tension. Rena, standing with her lively friend by the neatly made bed, discusses their dream. Her friend wonders aloud where exactly Rena and the mythical creatures, the ponies, should rest for the night. In another room, Rena is confronted with the idea of loneliness, her wide eyes betraying a sense of fear. She questions the assumption that she lives alone, emphasizing her tender age and apparent unpreparedness for such responsibility. The scene cuts to a moment of reassurance as Rena rocks gently in her companion's arms. She is reminded that life's difficulties are best faced with simplicity, and a simple smile can be balm for the soul. Under the blue hue of the night, Rena lies in bed in feverish discomfort, suspecting that the meal has gone wrong. She expresses her distress by wondering if the egg she consumed earlier is the cause of her current suffering. Rena, who is now sitting up in bed, enveloped in darkness and not feeling well at all, clutches her stomach. Her face is etched with the agony of her illness, and she shivers from the cold of her fever. Staring thoughtfully out the window, Rena searches for answers or perhaps an escape in the starlit sky. The silence of the night envelops her, creating a silent backdrop for her thoughts. Watching the distant sounds of celebration, Rena stands aloof from the revelry. Musical notes waft by, symbolizing a joy that seems beyond her reach, and she ponders the irony of the cheerful scene. Rena contemplates another life where she won't have to endure the loneliness that accompanies her current state, a reflection shaped by her father's past decisions. In a somber reflection, Rena recognizes the need to participate in the celebration rather than isolate herself. This realization stands in stark contrast to her earlier desire for solitude. Rena stands alone, looking at the building alive with music and celebration. The melody reaches her, but her grim expression reveals a detachment from the joy that surrounds her, a poignant mixture of longing and contemplation. Rena, with her pink hair flowing down her back, is anxiously aware of the rainy night at the fancy gate. A neon sign expresses her frustration. Why? Looking out into the night garden, Rena reflects on the popular belief that such a place is ideal for secret rendezvous. She stands thoughtfully, her long hair falling down her back. 
A close-up shows Rena's eyes, which are wide with shock and reflect a cascade of emotions, as if she has witnessed something unexpected and poignant. In a calmer setting, Rena, now with cat ears, looks surprised during the conversation and offers to increase the payment for the task next time. Faced with the unexpected presence, Rena's expression is alarmed. She stands under the night sky, entwined with vines, with a cautious stance. Already? Rena is gasping for breath, a look of worry on her face. She seems caught off guard, her body language a combination of hesitation and readiness. In the vivid close-up, Rena's face is a portrait of mixed emotions, her eyes wide, her mouth slightly open, as if she has barely spoken or screamed. Finally, Rena looks up with a question in her eyes. Mr. Rin? she asks, facing the man framed by the bright night and bright flowers. With surprise, Rena turns to the man in military uniform in the night gazebo, calling him by name. Alone, Rena worries about forgetting to bring something seemingly important, her face a mixture of regret and worry. Rena is surprised when the man calmly mentions safety, suggesting that they can do without what was forgotten. Lost in blissful reverie, Rena smiles to herself, her cheeks glowing with happiness in the evening light. Rena notes to her husband that their meeting has come earlier than she expected, and he confirms with a reserved stance. Reflecting on the passage of time, the man remarks to Rennie that he has changed a lot, his face showing introspection. As the evening grows colder, Rena asks the man about his comfort, and he admits after a moment that he is indeed cold. Glowing with renewed strength, Rena exclaims that she's ready to face whatever comes next, her enthusiasm shining bright. Together, Rena and her husband are ready for what lies ahead, their expressions showing a mix of determination and anticipation. In a moment alone, Rena, looking full of hope and determination, declares that it's time to rejoin the fight, ready for action. Rena stands under the night sky, her eyes wide in surprise as she reacts to something off screen. In the quiet of the night, Rena with pink hair is accompanied by a gloomy young man in a white military style jacket. Rena, smiling shyly, ponders some thought alone, her expression soft and understanding. Rena reassuringly tells the young man that almost everything is known, her gaze calm and her posture relaxed. The couple stands together in a moment of silence. The atmosphere tense with unspoken words. They walk side by side along the cobblestones. The man doubts Rena's search for a meeting with Rubel. Rena notices her husband's keen interest in her affairs, her indecipherable facial expression, but firm stance. The text, focusing on the man's boots, emphasizes his mysterious nature, as he does not reveal anything about himself. The man reveals himself to be from the Eastern lands, hinting at a complicated relationship with Rena's father who leaned towards the north. Rena looks surprised and self-absorbed, her large eyes reflecting a mixture of emotions as she contemplates the situation. Looking down, Rena asks if the man's secret actions were also done for her sake, hinting at complex motives lurking beneath the surface. The man looks confused as Rena expresses her desire to disappear, showing her inner turmoil. Rena confesses that she has been seeking an encounter with death, her sadness subtly conveyed through her downcast eyes and soft grip on her clothing. Standing in the moonlight, Rena declares that she does not exist in this moment, enveloped in an ethereal glow that emphasizes the gravity of her words. As Rena turns away, she reflects on her complete disappearance from this world and her existence, which seems more real in death than in life. With a gentle smile, Rena looks up at the night sky, perhaps finding solace in the stars above. Despite the apparent calm of the night, Rena admits that she has not been able to meet anyone, which suggests a lost connection or responsibility. The man observes Rena with wonder and insight, reflecting on the vulnerability of the timid and the aloofness of the strong. Under the night sky stands a girl named Rena with pink hair, looking up, her expression hidden, showing a combination of tenderness and resilience. A conversation unfolds between Rena and her husband in official form under the stars. He talks about traveling east if some marquis opposes her, to which she responds with interest. Rena stands with a man in uniform, revealing her stature and presence. She considers him undervalued, a pawn turned player, his status supposedly elevated. Rena's gaze meets the viewers as she playfully considers whether to address him with a noble title the next time they meet, hinting at a significant shift in their dynamic. The man wipes a tear from his eye, moved by Rena's insight and kindness which reflects her sensitive nature and his own vulnerability. As they stand side by side against the night, the man asks how he should address Rena during their future meetings, 
indicating a growing familiarity between them. With the knight as her witness, Rena suggests a more intimate method of address, suggesting they use names when alone as a sign of intimacy. Rena smiles quietly as she introduces herself as Rena, a simple act that personalizes and deepens the bond between them. The man is stunned, his face a canvas of wonder and contemplation as he considers Rena's request and the growing intimacy it implies. He confesses to his habit of taking night walks to clear his mind, sharing a personal detail that invites a deeper understanding of his character. In the nighttime setting, Rena utters a surprised, what? On the background of the starry sky, the young man responds with a casual demeanor, simply stating, just saying so. The moon illuminates the scene, creating an atmosphere of mystery. Rena closes her eyes and smiles contentedly, the word he floating beside her, hinting at her amusement or perhaps an inside joke. The man and Rena share a moment, both expressing their fondness for night walks, suggesting a common ground between them. The focus shifts to the grand mansion, and the text indicates someone's arrival or presence, creating a sense of anticipation or foreboding. At dawn, an older gentleman delivers a letter to a respectable man who appears to carry important news. The man reading the letter is frowning, his expression tense, implying that the contents of the letter cause concern or surprise. A conversation begins between the elderly man and the gentleman, which mentions a past event, seemingly full of intrigue and mystery. The man is facing the window, the elder doubts his scrupulousness. The gentleman assures that there will be no problems this time, showing his determination. Finally, the gentleman reflects on the southern hero's invitation to Reyna, reflecting on the personal nature of the gesture, setting the stage for a larger story. The noble gentleman, visibly troubled, exclaims that the woman Rena was an honored guest worthy of his host's reception. However, he questions why she arrived alone yesterday, hinting at a secret or problem. The scene pans to see Rena apologizing to the man, who is now holding a piece of paper, presumably an invitation or message, hinting at an official interaction or important exchange of information. Rena's father thinks to himself with narrowed eyes and a determined look that he wanted to see how she would react, indicating a planned confrontation or character test. The narrative takes a dramatic turn as Rena, holding two crossed swords for protection, faces off against shadowy figures. The text alludes to a game, an entry barrier, and a poisoning attempt, unfolding a tale of intrigue and betrayal. In the background, a man is shown looking out the window, noting that Reyna has become braver, suggesting a reunion after a period of growth or change, hinting at the evolution of Reyna's character. The opulent palace, bathed in sunlight, is described as the residence of heroes from the southern lands, setting a grand and possibly political stage for the events that unfold. In a royal office, a man ponders over documents, muttering thoughtfully, hinting at a difficult decision or problem he is facing. Rena arrives with a young girl at the door, the latter excitedly announcing their arrival, indicating a new stage or arrival at an important place in history. Finally, Rena greets someone by commenting on their past night's recreation, perhaps hinting at concerns or shared experiences from the night before, offering a personal approach to the unfolding events. In an elegant room filled with sunlight, a distinguished man in military uniform looks away from his letter in surprise, wondering if a person named Ames has arrived. In a spacious hallway, a cat-eared maid stands next to a woman named Rena, expressing her amazement at the perpetual ability to surprise someone named Richard. Sitting at his desk, the man now identified as Richard muses out loud about not being notified of the visit, asking why he was able to see the Marquise of Rubelio yesterday without informing him. With the warm daylight streaming through the windows, Rena stands humbly before Richard, head bowed, apologizing for not greeting him upon his arrival. Richard holds his glasses tightly, a look of disappointment on his face. He dismisses the need for an apology, pointing to a much more serious problem that needs his attention. Commanding the room, Richard, with a serious expression on his face, searches for an explanation as to why a well-paid mercenary would betray his trust, hinting at a deep betrayal. Under a starry sky, Rena stands with a conflicted expression on her face, holding a dialogue box that asks if a friend in a coat has appeared. The bleak narrative unfolds against a centuries-old war against the undead in the southern lands against a bleak, red-hued battlefield. The root of this conflict is revealed. The dead are disturbed by sounds. It shows emaciated bodies, reduced to bones, sliding across the ground, 
creating a cold atmosphere. A hideous undead creature lunges forward, its eyes glowing menacingly. This climactic moment epitomizes the terror of the undead, who are suddenly agitated. A warrior stands on a red sky battlefield, clutching a huge sword surrounded by silhouettes of fighters who embody the calm before the storm of violence. A battle-worn figure strikes a ghostly foe, their cloak billowing, the action captured in a freeze frame of prowess and violence against a backdrop of chaos. The gray-haired face of the commander stands out with a mixture of fear and determination. The words frame his expression, speaking of inevitable defeat accepted with a heavy heart. With the sky bleeding red, the knight stands solemnly over his fallen comrade, contemplating the end of it all, his silhouette in stark contrast to the chaos behind. Kneeling in defeat, the commander looks weary, his voice resigned to his fate and the heavy burden of leadership in the relentless tide of war. In an instant, a miracle flares up, bathing the commander in an ethereal glow, as if death itself has been stopped by an unforeseen force. The warrior embraces a vortex of crimson energy, an imaginary transformation or invocation that swirls with the potential to turn things around. Only on this precipice of defeat does the warrior recognize the true face of his adversary amidst the swirl of red, a revelation in the heat of battle. Returning to the light of day, the commander, now in stately uniform, asks for a report, his face a map of past wars and hard-won peace. The moment of reckoning comes beneath the shroud of fire, where a hidden eye is revealed, a glowing sphere of power or insight that opens in the crucible of battle. Rena stands in a swirl of coal, her eyes wide with apprehension as the text asks if she is a woman. A close-up of Wren from the side, with a tear rolling down her cheek, purring indecisively, conveys the emotional weight of the moment. Rena emphatically states that she has never posed as a man, and her maid confirms that her outfit is just a coincidence. An authoritative older man acknowledges Rena's statement, his face dotted with lines of experience echoing her sentiments. The man at the decorated table wonders if Rena's personality could be a problem, with a puzzled look on his face. With a steely gaze, Rena corrects the assumption, emphasizing her personality and dismissing any confusion with her husband. Confronted by an official, Rena is questioned about her quest to meet the northern ruler, reflecting on her connection to them. Rena claims to be the daughter of a northern ruler, her posture radiating dignity and a noble essence. The man leans forward, realizing that this is a complicated story, and decides to refrain from further questions. Determined, Reyna declares her willingness to unravel the mysteries surrounding the Northern Territories. A senior military man in uniform sternly confronts someone, challenging their plans and questioning their understanding of his position. The pink-haired Reyna has a thin, satisfied smile, letting it be known that she has a secret or plan that she is happy with. In a softer setting, Reyna offers protection, her promise enveloped in the tenderness of flowers, and the maid next to her looks on with admiration. The man, dressed in his royal robes, is wary of the proposal to unite with the northern territories, his face a look of skepticism. Reyna gleefully rejects the offer to side with the weak, her frivolity reflected in her servant's enthusiastic agreement. The man sits thoughtfully in his office, demonstrating a willingness to use each other for mutual benefit, albeit with the awareness of potential danger. Reyna, poised and confident, recalls their agreement, her eyes reflecting deep determination. The child informs Reyna of the resurrection of the Grand's empire, gratitude radiating from her raised hands. The story reveals a rebuilt kingdom on the territory of the once-ruined kingdom of Grand's, with the capital as the heart of this renaissance. A pensive young man stands in the shadows, his noble but unrecognized origins from a defeated eastern region denying him imperial honors, hinting at a deeper backstory of lost rights and aspirations. A character with long white hair and a gentle expression is sitting calmly, dressed in royal white and yellow clothing. The elaborate text frames around tell about the western lands, where the hero, having suffered losses in the war, becomes the main character in the capital. A stately elderly man with silver hair and a blue and white uniform represents the southern lands. The accompanying text recounts the hero's tireless efforts to prevent war by using sleeping soldiers to ensure life and victory. A gloomy man with dark hair dressed in a red military uniform represents the northern lands. The story mentions that he inherited the title after a hero's fall in battle, his anticipation of the end of the war coloring his stern appearance. Viewed from above, the meeting room with its characteristic octagonal table contains figures from the West, the North, and the Cardinal. 
This scene suggests that a significant council is taking place among the regional leaders. The white-haired character asks about the details of the scandalous night, the subject of widespread chatter. They sit surrounded by luxurious decor, radiating a combination of poise and curiosity. The dialogue unfolds as the older man is questioned about his decision to use a girl to inherit the title, a choice that seems to intrigue and puzzle the questioner. A heated debate ensues as the dark-haired man criticizes the girl's use of the inheritance as a disgusting tactic. The revelation is startling when the elderly man discovers that events have been deliberately orchestrated to force the North to acknowledge the child and reconsider its position, revealing a layer of strategic foresight. The dark-haired man ponders the rationale for an act that could change the position of the North, hinting at consequences and complex political machinations. A charged moment comes with an elderly man's authoritative assertion that limits have been exceeded, indicating a potential breach of protocol or strategy. In a dimly lit room, with lightning flashing outside, an older man in military uniform berates a younger man across the table for raising his voice, suggesting that he defend his reputation. The young man answers casually, noting that such serious matters will not end well. In a well-lit room, a character in a white coat playfully points out that no one has invited the Oriental hero to the talks, hinting at a possible oversight or deliberate exclusion. At the negotiating table, a senior military man criticizes the Oriental hero, calling him unworthy of his rank and expressing contempt for him. The young man who is sitting agrees, saying that there is nothing to talk to him about. The character in white seems relieved and pleased, thinking to himself that he has successfully changed the subject, standing against a brightly patterned background that creates an upbeat atmosphere. The scene changes abruptly as the door is flung open, shown at a low angle, emphasizing the sudden and forceful entrance of someone or something that disturbs the peace. A person in white appears shocked and distressed, covering their face with their hands, while another figure stands calmly behind them, hinting at a startling discovery or event. A figure in a dark cloak stands by a slightly ajar door, with light shining behind it, creating a stark contrast. They look surprised and confused as they look at someone off-panel. The same character in white lies on the floor as if tripped or pushed, while a figure in a dark cloak looms over them, suggesting a sudden and possibly aggressive turn of events. A dark-cloaked figure stands commandingly in a room with others seated around a hexagonal table, asking if they have ordered the man on the floor to be silent, which could indicate a conflict of authority or a misunderstanding. Finally, a figure in white stands by the door, touching their cheek thoughtfully, and speaks, perhaps reflecting on the situation or addressing someone's arrival or personality. In a dramatic scene, Rin, a man with short black hair, looks shocked as he loudly exclaims about the secret meeting, his voice echoing off the walls. Rin stands confidently, questioning someone at his feet about their keen interest in the discussion, indicating a power imbalance. An older gentleman dressed in blue and gold military regalia sternly reprimands someone for their lack of manners, hinting at the expectations of high society. Sitting casually with his legs propped up, Rin sarcastically questions the logic of mice, metaphor, having a secret meeting and then worrying about manners. A high-ranking military man with a stern expression shouts about the eternal sands of the eastern lands, showing strong excitement or perhaps scolding someone. Rin looks distressed with a hand on his head, hinting at regret, worry, or a headache, perhaps due to the tense situation unfolding around him. During the meeting, Rin insists that she will not tolerate anything more and offers to go first, setting the tone of defiance or leadership. A man in a red and black uniform stands up, announcing his return, which seems to be a response to Rin's previous statement, indicating a mutual understanding or agreement. A white-haired man sits at a meeting table with a pensive or pensive expression on his face, making a non-committal sound that may indicate hesitancy or deep thought. Finally, the white-haired person compliments Rin on his behavior, suggesting it befits a hero, to which Rin, still sitting casually, agrees with a hint of sarcasm or modesty. Rin sits relaxed in the large office with her feet propped up on the desk and contemplates in silence. The room is spacious and luxuriously decorated, which speaks of its high status. Walking alongside another man in uniform through an opulent hallway, Rin appears in conversation as his companion listens intently. The grandeur of their surroundings underscores their importance. Rin, 
dressed in a dark, elegant fur-trimmed uniform, orders someone to leave, his voice commanding and final. Another person, bowing his head as a sign of defeat or respect, obeys without protest. Standing alone against the backdrop of elaborate double doors, Rin appears brooding and isolated. The silence of the corridor envelops him, reinforcing his lonely state. A close-up shows Rin's youthful features, a mix of determination and softness in his expression. The light casts a glow around him, hinting at a moment of realization or epiphany. A stern-faced elderly man in military uniform reflects on his age and the burden it brings. His whole life, full of duty and hopes, is reflected on his face. Rin, shown in profile, is consumed by shadows, his face marked by a moment of vulnerability or humility. The simplicity of the shot emphasizes his inner struggle. Lying in bed, Rin's body language betrays a weary acceptance, his words implying a preference for caution over recklessness. It is enveloped in a blue light that casts an otherworldly glow. Rin looks up to see a girl with pink eyes and long hair, an unexpected visitor who seems important to him. The surprise and connection between them is palpable in his upward gaze. Finally, the same strict elderly man appears, indignant, perhaps offended. His pride is evident, as is his contempt for those who challenge him. Rin lies in the darkness, his face a pained expression. He whispers Thu, as if in pain or defeat. It's a somber moment that conveys his struggle. In a large corridor flooded with sunlight, an elegant clock indicates that there is an hour left before the start of the negotiations between the heroes. The situation involves a period of rest before important processes. Rena's servant, a girl with distinctive beast-like ears, declares her refusal to be left behind, puffing out her cheeks in a mixture of frustration and determination. Her dialogue reveals a strong-willed personality. As she walks away, the maid expresses her displeasure at being used as a cover and is now trying to maintain a facade, giving a glimpse of her displeasure with the current situation or hierarchy. The maid is startled by what she finds on the floor and exclaims in surprise. This unexpected revelation seems to break the seriousness of the moment. The object of her attention turns out to be an invitation to the Imperial Ball. The luxurious and intricate design of the invitation suggests the grandeur and importance of the event. Rena reads the invitation with a stunned expression, noting that the sender's name is not given. This detail adds a layer of mystery and perhaps foreboding about the ball to come. Rena asks the servant if she was the one who brought the invitation, to which the servant seems to confirm with a hint of excitement and pride at being involved in such an important matter. The servant, clearly overjoyed, asks Rena if this isn't a wonderful development, her face glowing with emotion. Her enthusiasm shows that she sees the invitation as a positive and potentially exciting opportunity. Rena's face hardens with suspicion, the red glow in her eyes intensifying as she declares that they are being checked. This means underlying tension and the possibility of hidden agendas. In a large, luxurious hallway, Reina, a girl with pink hair, is holding an envelope. She inwardly reflects on her anonymity in the imperial court and believes that if the sender had sinister intentions, they would seek her out personally to challenge her status. In the same hallway, Rena, with her hair slicked back and wearing a white and blue dress, receives a letter from a diminutive maid with dark hair and a black and white uniform. The maid points out that the letter is a verification of Rena's acceptance by the higher echelons of society. A wide-eyed, open-mouthed maid reacts with shock at being called a newbie. Her surprised exclamation fills the panel expressing her disbelief. In the background, Rena can be seen in a fluttering blue dress, casually tossing the letter aside. She reflects on the audacity of the others, suggesting that they see her as an outcast if she ignores the invitation. Accompanied by a blonde man in a formal blue suit, Raina ponders how attending the ball with her partner could lead to calculations on her part. They are both portrayed as refined and poised. The dark-haired maid confronts Raina with a hypothetical scenario of choosing sides in a conflict, asking about Raina's possible actions in such a situation, suggesting a deeper strategic layer to their lives. Rena, looking serious, asks someone out of sight for a particular dress. Her serious expression shows the importance of the request. The maid stares at Rena in the brightly lit room, regarding the dress as the key to their safety, implying that clothing is more important than appearance. Rena admires a gorgeous white dress adorned with light blue flowers and roses, contemplating how to accentuate her elegance with bright flowers. 
In the final look, the focus is on the hem of the dress, which showcases its detailed floral embroidery and exquisite white shoes adorned with flowers, emphasizing the meticulous care and craftsmanship in Rena's appearance. In a grand and elegant room, a majestic chandelier hangs from the ceiling, emitting a soft, warm glow. The light reflects off what appears to be a luxurious curtain draped behind it, creating an atmosphere of luxury and comfort. Under the soft light, Ren's chandelier stands on the threshold of the front door. With her back to the viewer, she gazes into a brightly lit space, her pink hair decorated with delicate flowers, hinting at an elegant and important event. Rena can be seen in close-up, her eyes wide with an intense look. She stares at a lace fan, her hair styled with flowers that match the fan's intricate patterns. There is a sense of anticipation in her expression, as if she is waiting for something or someone at this lavish gathering. In a room full of well-dressed gentlemen, one stands out when he sees something or someone off-panel. The word, wow, escapes him, indicating a moment of amazement or delight caused by a possibly magical sight or event. Rena is depicted in her full glory, wearing an exquisite white dress adorned with lace and floral embellishments. She gracefully holds her fan, epitomizing elegance and beauty, poised as if she is the center of attention at this distinguished event. In the grand ballroom, glowing with golden light, a silhouetted figure stands elegantly, basking in the final day of the ball, seemingly at peace in the midst of grandeur. In the midst of a luxurious setting, two women are enjoying their high spirits. One, dressed in a yellow dress, exclaims his master's talented beauty, considering it nothing short of divine. A silver-haired gentleman wearing elaborate robes sits with a satisfied smile, one hand on the shoulder of the woman next to him, both holding glasses, perhaps toasting the occasion. With a look of intrigue, the same gray-haired man asks if any ladies will be attending the event, his eyes glistening with anticipation. Even if another woman doesn't come, the crowd is already abuzz with speculation about how she'll enter, excited murmurs filling the dark corner of the room. Silverhaired listens to the compliment about the day's festivity, noting that thanks to Mr. Ruby, the ball promises to be quite interesting. A lady in a dark, elegant dress leaned against her companion, holding a glass of champagne, the fizzing sound complimenting the lively chatter around her. The crowd's anticipation rises as they catch sight of the expected arrival, a collective gasp of recognition. Stepping into the bright light of the entrance, Rena arrives, drawing all eyes to her. Light spills around her, setting the stage for a dramatic entrance. Rena stands in the doorway, her presence commanding attention. With her pink hair and exquisite dress, she commands the attention of the room. Her elegance is unmistakable. A woman's step, balanced and graceful, reveals an elegant atmosphere. Her shoes emphasize her expectations. Rena, standing at the altar, becomes the shining center of the event, surrounded by the warm glow of the audience's attention. Rena's face, captured in a moment of determination, reflects the depth of her emotional journey. Looking down, Rena stands aloof, her presence alone sending a silent awe through the room. The gentleman under the stars asks Rena a teasing question, his casual stance belying the weight of his words. Rena's surprised look speaks volumes, betraying the rush of thought provoked by the night's events. Laughter and jokes paint a scene of light banter as Rena's lonely arrival becomes the topic of conversation. Amidst the whispered judgments, a spectator's voice breaks through, criticizing Rena's understanding of social niceties. In profile, Rena's reserved demeanor contrasts sharply with the majesty that surrounds her. The change in the man's face signals a change in the atmosphere of the evening, hinting at the unfolding of the drama. Rena, with her striking pink hair, exudes an aura of mystery as she looks off to the side, her gaze partially hidden by her bangs. Surrounded by a crowd of elegant partygoers, Rena stands out with her elegantly styled pink hair and an expression of anticipation when someone exclaims in surprise. In the crimson haze, the man's expression is tense. He seems to doubt Rena's success with a hint of doubt in his words. In the great hall, Rena stands poised, her dress as lush as her posture. She hides a meaningful smile behind her fan, which adds to her attractiveness. Sitting in deep thought, the man strategizes his next move in the game. His contemplative state suggests that his mind is busy with complex plans. The man questions himself about Rena's loneliness, hinting at the deeper context of her situation. Rena is looking out over the grand ballroom, her elegance unmatched, when she sees someone in the crowd who catches her eye. 
In the middle of an emotional moment, the woman's facial expression changes to upset, and her body language shows that she is shocked by the accusation. Rena sighs quietly behind her gentle fan. One can feel her contemplation, perhaps about the location of something or someone important. In the close-up, Rena's face shows a mixture of emotions, her eyes sharp yet contemplative, as if she is inwardly questioning an interesting subject. In an emotional scene, Jigga looks upset. Her eyes are filled with tears, and the single word, unfortunately, suggests deep despair. At the grand event, Rena looks stunned, her posture tense and her mouth open as if she's half-sentenced, the word bith escaping her lips, indicating a sudden and profound upset. Caught in a moment of realization, the silver-haired gentleman clasps his hands together. His wide eyes and open mouth accompanied by his words, What? Is that all it takes? Reflect his wonder and perhaps revelation. With a pained expression, the same man covers his face, the word, Ha! I'm losing my mind. Hovering above, revealing his inner turmoil and the seriousness of the unfolding situation. In the close-up, the man covers his mouth, his eyes wide in shock. A single exclamation of ha represents a moment of intense surprise or disbelief. Rena is depicted in a wedding dress with solemn determination. Her eyes, glowing a fiery pink shade, betray her strong emotions. A close-up shows a surprised figure with silver hair and a determined gaze who seems to be at the center of a dramatic revelation. The scene opens with a large setting where a pink-haired girl, Rena, stands in front of a seated man in royal attire, drawing the attention of the shadowed audience. In a bright, luxurious room, a woman in green confronts Rena, indignantly declaring that she is unworthy of social status, while a man sitting next to her appears deep in thought. The man now standing is gesticulating dismissively, irritated by the situation as the woman in green and the butler look on. A bearded man bursts in, angrily demanding that Rena be kicked out of the event, his face contorted with rage. Rena, sitting on the balcony, looks down as the bearded man reaches for her, a worried look on his face. The bearded man slips and falls on his back as the audience looks on in shock, and Rena looks down in surprise. The man lies on the ground, embarrassed and angry, trying to understand what just happened. Rena holds up the invitation, her eyes wide with shock, hinting that she does indeed have a right to be at the event. In a lighter moment, the man laughs to himself, remarking that no one seems to be in any real trouble while the scene unfolds in the background. In a spacious, elaborately decorated room, a gray-haired, smartly-dressed character looks surprised and perhaps a little amused as he asks another unseen character why they've been invited. The brown-haired figure, dressed in regal attire with a red coat, holds a flute of champagne with a look of casual elegance, presenting himself with a touch of mystery, just like Mr. Rubia. Rena stands alone in a great hall filled with golden light. She seems contemplative, maybe even a little melancholy, as she notes that all the guests seem to have arrived, and that's enough. The same pink-haired woman, Reina, closes her eyes with a calm expression, thinking, she doesn't know who organized this gathering, but she is grateful because it allowed her to introduce herself. Startled, Rena turns around abruptly, her pink hair blowing around her as she seems to recognize someone in the crowd. Her face shows shock and perhaps a hint of recognition. In an almost fairy tale moment, Reina sees a familiar face in the crowd, the mysterious Mr. Rubio. The lighting accentuates his golden locks and red outfit, casting him in a dramatic light. Rena faces Rubia, her expression a complex mix of emotions, perhaps gratitude mixed with a hint of sarcasm or bitterness as she thanks him for the invitation, hinting at a deeper story between them. Rubia, with his golden hair and eyes filled with unspoken emotion, gently holds Rena's hand. He seems to be asking if she's leaving the event yet, with a subtle tone of concern or perhaps reluctance. The two of them, Rena and Rubia, stand together against a glittering, starry backdrop that suggests a dance floor. Rena glares at him, stating that no one asked her to dance, to which Rubia regretfully replies that he has to decline for today. Rena reacts with surprise, pulling away from Rubia as he reaches for her. Her eyes are wide open, and her posture is tense, as if she is surprised by something unexpected or disturbing. Reina looks up, her expression a mixture of confusion and shock as she considers the gentleman's harsh words. His statement hangs in the air. If you leave now, you will live. Reina's eyes widen in disbelief at Ruvid's bold question. Do you want to dance with me?
His words challenge her, demanding an answer. With a fierce scowl, Rena's thoughts are clear as she mentally criticizes Ruvid, thinking, what's wrong with him? Ruvid stands confidently in the crowd, attracting attention with his presence. He is described as rude and brash, unfazed by the noise around him. Out of the corner of her eye, Rena notices Ruvid's destructive charisma. His very existence draws everyone's attention. The figure questions Ruvid's audacity, wondering who this indifferent man could be, as Ruid stands alone with an enigmatic smile. Amidst the grandeur of the ballroom, Ruvid's team cuts through the elegance. Hey, bring the drinks! With a smooth movement, Ruvid fills the glass, offering a toast before the dance. The liquid dances in the light, hinting at the potential of the evening. Rena hesitates, her refusal to drink before the dance soft but firm, expressed in a simple, I don't want to, Ruvid leans in, his face a complex tapestry of emotion as he accepts Rena's refusal, whispering, Fine, if you don't want to. His respect for her decision is evident in his watchful gaze. Surprised, Rena is drenched in a stream of liquid from the cup above her as she ponders the situation, bubbles surrounding her. Ruvid, smiling broadly, nonchalantly insists that one cannot refuse a drink offered by someone as great as himself. With a bright smile, Ruvid is elegantly dressed, presented as the younger brother of the northern hero, his eyes shining with mischief. Rena stands resolute in her wedding dress, sword clutched, determined to deal with the betrayal that has rocked the northern region. Ruvid's fingers delicately touch his exquisite brooch, a sly smile on his face as he silently creates his scheme. Leaning in, Ruvid teases Rena, playfully commenting on the situation, while Rena looks up at him, surprised and defensive. Rena looks startled, her eyes wide as something unexpected has happened, her mouth half open. Her expression turns into one of shock. A loud thump echoes around her, the details of her elegant dress highlighted in the commotion. In the full portrait, Ren stands awkwardly, her wedding dress detailed and graceful, as a hand reaches out and gently touches the fabric. Ruvid stands with a toast, a sly smile on his face, casually mocking the situation with a rhetorical question about decency. As luxurious chandeliers cast a soft glow on the great hall, Rena stands alone on the balcony, her gaze deep in thought. Below, silhouettes gossip about her, their whispers full of anticipation for the drama to unfold. With a tear glistening on her cheek, Rena is alone considering her next move. Should she cause a scandal on her birthday as suggested, questioning her own intentions in a world where her every move is scrutinized? Amidst the festivities, Ruvid confidently holds a glass of champagne, pondering hypothetical freedom. His stance exudes a casual grace, unfazed by the events around him. Rena looks dignified and composed, her delicate jewelry and pale pink hair contrasting with the emotional turmoil reflected in her eyes. She is the epitome of grace under pressure. Ruvid's expression changes to one of shock, his eyes wide as he grabs the white glove, its significance apparent in his sudden horror. This unexpected turn pierces his calmness. The tension between Rena and Ruvid is palpable as she resolutely rejects his gesture with her eyes downcast. The finality of the moment is heavy in the air. Looking from his position on the stage, Ruvid maintains his poise despite the charged atmosphere. His eyes meet Rena's, each in their own silent conversation. Rena's swift departure symbolizes her final stand, her posture of defeated grace as she leaves behind a declaration of her independence, a farewell to the life she once knew. Rena, a girl with pink hair, stands by the window, looking pensive and melancholy. The text means something went wrong. But things went wrong, it says, implying that a plan or hope has failed. On the floor, hinting at an important event, perhaps a wedding, that has changed. A solemn Rena can be seen in the snow, clutching her chest as if in distress. You need to calm down. I can't be the way I was before, she says, indicating an internal struggle and desire for change. Rena is shocked to see a young maid in the reflection, who exclaims in surprise, Wow, you are earlier than I thought, assuming an unexpected meeting. The servant reacts to the strong smell. Ugh, it smells like alcohol, possibly indicating a party or that someone has had a lot to drink. Surprised, the maid asks the servant, What's wrong with your appearance? Implying that the servant looks different or unexpected in some way. Confused, Rena begs for help getting dressed, saying, Help me get dressed. And the servant, surprised, says, Get dressed. The maid expresses her discomfort by saying, Pins on the skin. 
but it takes a long time to change, showing reluctance or difficulty with the process. Rena, clutching her hair, looks distressed and orders, Johnny, get your uniform ready, conveying a sense of urgency and need for action. A grand fountain erupts in the middle of the opulent mansion as Rena says, a river of white foam, setting off a dramatic and possibly chaotic scene. In a lavishly decorated room, a silver-haired man looks tired and asks for another dish. Opposite them, Ruvid with golden braids dryly alludes to poison, bringing a touch of black humor into the conversation. They discuss someone's attempts at dressing up with the silver-haired one finding it odd, while Ruvid casually dismisses it, suggesting that the effort might not be worth it. The silver-haired man suddenly looks startled, his gaze caught by something or someone off-frame, suggesting an unexpected turn or unexpected arrival. A close-up of a gray-haired person's face shows widened eyes, emphasizing their surprise, capturing a moment of intrigue or anxiety. Ruvid, sitting tight, utters rubia with a mix of command and frustration, perhaps addressing someone or showing irritation at the situation. With tense eyes, Ruvid orders to look in a certain direction, the expression of which conveys the urgency and seriousness of the unfolding situation. The appearance of Rena, with her pink hair and royal attire, suggests that a new, important character has appeared on the scene who can potentially change the dynamics of the event. A wide-eyed Ruvid is clearly surprised or confused, their face conveying an emotion that suggests an unexpected or disturbing development. Rena stands powerfully behind Ruvid, who sits in the foreground. This image emphasizes Rena's importance in the narrative, positioning her as an important figure. Finally, Ruvid, now alone and seated, appears thoughtful or perhaps even frightened, hinting at the turn of events that has forced them to reconsider. In the grand ballroom, Rena, with flowing pink hair and wearing a blue military uniform, looks on with a hint of anxiety. She asks if anyone wants to dance with her. Elsewhere in the ballroom, a man with long blonde hair, Ruvid, looks stunned and angry, speaking in a harsh tone. The scene moves to a more intimate setting where Reyna, now reaching out, pleads with Ruvid, who sits defiantly, refusing her offer to dance. Reyna's face softens as she tries to convince Ruvid, who looks stoic and uncertain. The confrontation escalates when Reyna aggressively grabs Ruvid's arm as he tries to break away. Ruvid widens his eyes at Reyna's unexpected strength. Stunned murmurs fill the room as Rena's confidence shines and Ruvid stumbles, caught off guard by Rena's determination. Rena, graceful but strong, reluctantly guides Ruvid across the floor. Passers-by are stunned, asking where this modest girl found such strength. Rena's poise is evident, her eyes locked on the target as Ruvid looks over her shoulder, defeated and confused. As Rena tightens her grip, Ruvid demands to be released, a mixture of anger and despair on her face. Rena's posture remains steadfast, her expression unassuming as she insists on dancing, determined to do things her way. Rena pins a struggling Ruvid into a dance pose, declaring that they will dance regardless of consent. Ruvid looks away, her resistance weakening under Rena's unwavering gaze as the opulent ballroom blurs around them. Among the circling dancers, the musician notes his own detachment from the event, feeling out of place at his first ball and unable to fully immerse himself in the atmosphere, his violin an extension of his hesitation. Rena, spinning Ruvid around the floor, claims that she would have made adjustments if she had known Ruvid didn't like rudeness. The room is bathed in golden light, Rena glows with triumph, and Ruvid seems a dazed whirlwind. With a powerful move, Rena plunges Ruvid sharply, the room held its breath as Rena's dominance in the dance was unquestionable, Ruid's will bending under her strong elegance, her defiance turning to astonishment. In the warmly lit room, Rena looks at Ruvid with a mixture of confusion and concern as he passionately asks why they can't resolve their conflict, his eyes shining with intensity and his mouth drawn into a determined line. Standing in front of an elaborate backdrop, Rena tries to reason with Ruvid, her hands gesticulating expressively, offering to give each other space, a look of desperation on her face, hoping to ease their shared worries. Golden hair frames an angry face, and Ruvid's eyes burn with resentment. He verbally lashes out at Rena, his voice ringing with betrayal as he accuses her of undermining him with her one-sided decisions. In the middle of the great hall, Ruvid gestures dramatically in defiance of Rena's reluctance, his posture full of flair and arrogance, while she stands beside him, her face one of humility and faint amusement. Rena reaches out a hand gently to Ruvid, her touch uncertain but firm, as if offering a truce. 
the mood seems to soften, hinting at the golden light that bathes them both. From the side, Rena's profile stands out against the background of the luxury of the great hall. She looks ahead with a slight smile, her red eyes reflecting the plan she has yet to reveal. Their hands are almost touching, a hair's breadth apart, the tension palpable in the space between them, the majesty of their surroundings reflecting the significance of the moment. Caught in a tight embrace, Rena leans into Ruvid, her eyes closed and a calm expression on her face, as if she's found peace in the midst of chaos. Frightened, Ruvid looks at Rena, surprised. His wide eyes and dropped jaw convey his shock as he lies vulnerable under her gaze. A close-up of Rena shows a mischievous glint in her eyes, a smile playing on her lips as she looks up at Ruvid, enjoying the unexpected twist in their dynamic. In the big ballroom, Rena and Ruvid are engaged in an elegant dance. Rena gracefully leans back and Ruvid supports her, both lost in the moment. With a menacing smile, Ruvid warns Ren not to remove her hand, threatening to send her to another world, illustrating the ominous undertone of their dance. Rena looks up at Ruvid with a graceful and gentle expression, her eyes conveying a mixture of emotions as they continue to chat. With a tone of respect, Ruvid addresses Rena, thanking her for the dance and expressing how much he enjoyed it, revealing the formal and polite side of their meeting. Ruvid is shown stunned, his hand on his chest as if he experienced an unexpected sensation, his eyes wide with an expression of surprise and intrigue. A close-up of Ruvid's hand shows redness that suggests a mysterious and possibly painful encounter, his expression one of confusion and worry. With an intense look, you can see how Ruvid suddenly reaches out his hand, his face conveys a sense of urgency or reaches for something that is simply beyond his power. A quick motion shows Ruvid taking Rena in his arms, his cloak billowing around them, suggesting protective or perhaps urgent action. Rena covers her mouth with a hand in shock or disbelief, her eyes wide as she takes in the sudden startling development. Ruvid stands in disbelief, confusion and realization mixed in his eyes, as if an important truth has just dawned on him. Rena, with a slight smile and an elegantly placed hand next to her face, remains calm. A dialogue bubble shows her cold confidence as she declares, I see you haven't figured it out yet. Standing tall in the great hall, Rena looks shocked, her eyes wide and her mouth slightly open. A vibrant purple tick frames her surprise, accentuating her sudden shock. Rena stares at the horizon, her posture straight but hinting at disappointment. These words convey a sense of shattered expectations. Indeed, the long-awaited event that everyone was looking forward to has fallen apart. Ruvid can be seen kneeling on the ground, his figure collapsed from defeat against the background of golden shades. The fall of a man once highly respected is palpable. Up close, Rena's face is a mixture of smugness and triumph. She declares with a smile, instead of applause, he gets the cold shoulder from society. A dramatic turn of events. Rena kneels, overcome with emotion, her long pink hair covering her face. Ruvid stands in the background, looking at her anxiously, the bright red of his uniform standing out against the soft glow surrounding them. Ruvid looks stunned as he stares at something off-screen with a hint of worry on his face. His expression contrasts with the serene background, the deep blue of his uniform standing out against the darker sky. The two hands are pressed together, creating a small flash of light. The sound, ha, exclaims, meaning either a sudden realization or a reaction to an unexpected event. The figure in the background laughs heartily, her white outfit and carefree posture contrasting with the elegant surroundings. The dialogue suggests that they are amused by the situation unfolding before them. Rena, who is already on her feet, exclaims great, with a mixture of amazement and admiration as he watched the spectacle unfold. Her figure is balanced and dynamic. The lighting gives her a heroic silhouette. Electricity crackles around Ruvid, who appears defeated on the floor. His figure is shrouded in a red aura, indicating an intense battle or surge of power, while Rena watches from afar. Ruvid, now energized, stands amid the flames and floating wreckage, determination around him. The scene conveys a pivotal moment of action and power. Rena prepares herself, surrounded by an energetic explosion, uttering, this is it, signaling a critical moment or opening. The white-robed figure nonchalantly gestures as he says, Looks like our prince has indeed woken up. They seem cheerful, watching the events with a knowing smile. Ruvid, engulfed in fiery energy, screams in agony or tension. His pain or effort is palpable as he is stunned by the power consuming him. 
Rena watches, her eyes wide and shining as Ruvid stands before her, full of divine power. Pain and determination intertwine on his face. In a red and black vision, Ruvid is enveloped in divine power, returning from the abyss with newfound power. Standing above a mountain of vanquished enemies, Rena explores the world she saved with the power she gained during her trials. Rena is depicted with a calm expression on her face, her divine power flowing in a gentle stream, a gift of her difficult times. The youngest brother, Ruvid, continuing the legacy of the northern hero, inherits divine power and gains the right to wield power. Addressing Rena, Ruvid states that he left her one eye as a reminder, a loss mirrored in his own gaze. Rena's eyes are calm and determined, a stark contrast to the chaos erupting around her as Ruvid unleashes his fury. Ruvid stands tall in the middle of the Great Hall, his presence commanding attention as he declares his intention to duel. Ruvid confronts Rena, his anger palpable against the setting sun. Rena's turmoil subsides instantly, a moment of peace amidst the luxury of the grand ballroom. Rena looks on with a thoughtful expression, her eyes reflecting a deep shade of red. The text hint at the top hints at her curiosity as she wonders about the cause of an uncertain situation. Rena, with a surprised look, her eyes wide and her mouth slightly open, conveys her surprise. She stands in an elegant outfit adorned with medals, a stark contrast to her shocked demeanor. A stern man, dressed in formal attire, issuing a firm directive. He orders the day's events to end and it's time for Rennie to return, indicating a position of authority. A quiet exchange ensues as Rena accepts her husband's instructions, realizing it's time to call it quits. A man called The Prince stands with his back to us, reinforcing his order. In the wider shot, Rena is shown from behind, the little girl standing in front of the prince who is talking to a man with blonde hair. The setting looks like a stately estate, which emphasizes the formality of their interaction. A close-up of the prince's profile shows his focus and determination as he gazes off into the distance. His elegant attire speaks of his status and the serious atmosphere of the conversation. Rena calls out softly to what must be the prince, watching him from the bottom corner. Her facial expression is gentle, contrasting with the sharp formality of the environment around her. The couple, Rena and the prince, walk side by side, though not walking. Their postures indicate a formal relationship with a prince leading the way. In a somber moment, Rena bows her head in submission, and the silhouette of the prince is visible in the background. The scene is emotionally charged as Rena seems to struggle with silent acceptance. The prince speaks, presumably ending their conversation. He has his back turned to Rena, his statement indicating closure or recognition of their respective positions. Rena, floating in the air with a stoic expression on her face, asks about the well-being of an unidentified person. A man in formal attire is standing below, calmly listening to her questions. A man with an authoritative appearance declares that the subject of their conversation is unrelated to the person he is addressing, maintaining a neutral face that hides his true thoughts. Rena, shown in close up, looks thoughtfully to the side. Her elaborate military uniform and elaborate tassels on her shoulders speak of the high rank and burden he carries. The story shifts to a grand building where the hero of the North is said to have lived. An interesting question about the identity of the girl remained in the air. The conversation becomes tense as claims are made about the girl's resemblance to the man's daughter. He denies this with a pained expression on his face, revealing that his daughter is dead. The girl, named Ruvid, looks upset. The man reassures her by explaining her daughter's death and suggesting that Ruvid is manipulating her emotions. Ruvid responds skeptically to the man's gratitude, doubting his intentions. She resents the intrusion into her personal space. She chides him for singing a disgusting tune to the others. Her angry expression and clenched fist convey her disdain, and the accusation stings the man. The man lectures Ruvid about the importance of reputation to the imperial family, hinting at the political and personal complexities of their world. Ruvid, her pride wounded by her husband's rebuke, sits defiantly. She looks like a cornered mouse, which emphasizes the power dynamics at play. Ruvel stands calmly, expressing gratitude to someone for taking his side, though the context of the conversation remains undisclosed. Rena looks surprised and puzzled against the playful abstract shapes, wondering if someone is ignorant or simply indifferent. Ruvel appears distressed, lamenting the damned fools of the South and demanding a lady-in-waiting to entertain them, hinting at a deeper disturbance. 
The character criticizes one's ability to empathize with a bereaved father, hinting at a difficult situation. In the darkened setting, Ruval's expression turns serious as he claims that the girl in question is indeed his daughter, revealing a personal connection. Rin sits alone on a bench at night, surrounded by a serene garden, pondering the nature of the recent excitement he's felt. He is struck by an unusual explosion, powerful enough to shake the area, and not just any mundane battle but something more significant. An energized Rena proclaims that only a coward would do such a dastardly act, showing her fiery temper in the face of chaos. Rin remains seated, calm despite the electrical storm, identified as a young lord of the northern lands, hinting at his noble status. He ponders his boredom casually, suggesting that he was hoping for something more entertaining tonight, displaying a combination of arrogance and a desire for excitement. In a serene nighttime setting, Rin stands pensively with a halo-like light above him, giving him an ethereal appearance. He looks contemplative and a bit withdrawn, immersed in his thoughts. Reyna greets Rin with a warm, Good evening, Mr. Rin, her expression friendly and her attire suggesting she was at or preparing for a formal event. Rin notices that Reyna isn't wearing a cape today and asks if she's been to any ceremony, showing interest in her unusual outfit for the evening. With a gentle smile, Rina offers to change the subject to something more interesting, diverting the conversation from her outfit and the evening's events. Rin looks tired, to which he comments, prompting Ren to ask if something is wrong, showing concern for his condition. Rin sits down, looking resigned, and admits that although he feels tired, he has something important to tell Rina, hinting at the burden he carries. Rina asks if Rin has been waiting for her all this time, implying the appointment, or perhaps waiting for her to arrive. Rina turns away slightly, suggesting that it's probably best for her to leave, perhaps sensing Rin's unease or respecting his need for solitude. Rina's face shows shock and confusion when Rin mentions the breakup, indicating that his words were unexpected and possibly unintended. Rin and Rina stand apart, the distance between them palpable. Rin thinks it's time to say goodbye, and Rina looks at her with a mixture of surprise and horror. Rin, with short black hair, looks troubled under the soft light, his eyes conveying complex emotions. He is making a statement, perhaps setting a decisive boundary. Standing against the cloudy sky, Rin looks commanding as he ensures that the knights will no longer be troubled by unseen problems. Rina, her pink hair catching the light, has a worried look. She asks to forget about her, assuming a meeting that she wants to erase from her memory. On a cool night, Rin learns about Rina's stay with the hero from the south, which hints at an important past or connection for him. Rina, caught off guard, tries to explain herself. She insists she meant no harm and acknowledges Rin's kindness despite the obvious misunderstanding. In a dramatic twist, under the gaze of the moon, Rin decides that he must treat Rina like a death potion, indicating that the relationship has gone sour. An imperial order issued a few months ago, depicted with a royal figure in the rain, hints at a call to action, a gathering of the bravest. In the dark, Rina muses that it must have been because of this decree that the heroes of the Southern Land summoned her, revealing her significant role. Ready for battle, Rina looks at Rin, her eyes fierce and determined. They stand together, offering partnership in the face of adversity. Finally, Rin names someone as an enemy with a look of finality, his face partially shadowed, marking a pivotal moment of conflict or betrayal. Rina stands solemnly with her eyes closed, with a slight blush on her cheeks, as if caught in a moment of vulnerability. Her pink hair is neatly curled and her military-style uniform is pristine and formal. Turning away from someone unseen, Rina speaks with a hint of sarcasm as she tells Mr. Rina that things won't go as planned. Her stance is confident, even with her eyes downcast. At the sight of Rin, Rina's eyes shine with determination. She seems to explain her reasons for offering to help, maintaining a polite but commanding presence. Rin, seen from behind, seems shocked, responding with a simple, huh? His posture is tense, indicating surprise or embarrassment at Rina's words. Rina stands her ground, her dialogue suggesting she knows something personal about Rin's heritage. Rin kneels before her, looking up, a mixture of respect and curiosity on his face. Rina looks stern as she faces Rin, pointing her finger. Rin seems surprised, his eyes wide and his mouth hanging open like he's just been accused of something. Rina lets out a laugh as Rin looks on from the ground in confusion. She playfully chides him, suggesting that he never call her by a certain title. 
Rena declares her official status as a representative of the Southern Territories, her profile standing stoically against the night sky, a sign of her pride and authority. Standing over the kneeling Rin, Rena declares that their positions are not a reason to become enemies, her expression softening to show her unwillingness to conflict. Rin looks up, insisting that there are some things that can't just be avoided, perhaps hinting at a deeper, inevitable conflict between them. The pink-haired Rena looks surprised as she asks why Rin, a man with short black hair, helped her when she mentioned her origins in the Northern Lands. She confidently stands in front of him in an elegant, military-style outfit. Rin looks at him thoughtfully, asking if Ren realizes that she will face difficulties in communicating with him, suggesting that their interaction is dangerous. In the close-up, Rena turns away, looking determined, claiming that she can handle her problems and prefers to deal with them on her own. Rena looks up at the night sky, her eyes wide with realization as she stumbles upon the reason behind her actions. She does so because of her feelings for Rin. Both are standing in a picturesque night garden. Rin is sitting and Rena is standing. The space between them is filled with unspoken words, and Rena's eyes twinkle with a complex mixture of emotions under the starry sky. Rena smiles gently, looking calm and at ease against the night sky, indicating a sense of contentment with the current moment. Rin, taken aback, looks startled with wide eyes and a flushed face, as if he just heard something surprising or perhaps disturbing. Rena, turning away from Rin, reminds him of the past favor and his promise to pay her back in any way she chooses, hinting at a deeper connection and possibly a linchpin in their relationship. In a warm room, Rena and Rin face each other. Rin seems to refuse what Rena has offered, saying it's too much for a simple thank you, hinting at his humility or unwillingness to be in debt. With a mischievous smile, Rena offers to continue their friendship. The phrase seems to have a deeper meaning, perhaps a veiled confession or an invitation to deepen their bond. Rena stands upright in the night, her pink hair glowing as she tells Rin she'll take it as payment. Rin looks up in shock as Rena leans in and reassures him, resolutely accepting the task at hand. Rin, caught off guard, falls silent, not believing in Rena's willingness to take on the job. Rena offers her hand and offers to live in friendship, meaning a truce until the end, while the stars twinkle above. Smiling, Rena holds out her hand, her eyes closed in a deal that lasts until one of them dies. Hesitant but forced, Rin begins to reach out, realizing the weight of Rena's words in the dim evening light. Their hands come together, clasping in agreement as Rin ponders the seriousness of Rena's vow. Rena's eyes are closed, her face content and sly. She knows the deal is done and their destinies are intertwined. Finally, their hands firmly connect, strengthening their vows under the shade of the gazebo in the quiet night. Rena whispers, however, as she looks at Rin, leaving a pause filled with unspoken possibilities and future adventures. Rena stands under the starry sky and tells Rin that she has one more condition. His profile is turned towards her as he asks curiously, what is that? Next, a close-up of Rena, her eyes wide and serious as she utters an emphatic no. Rin's head is bowed and he says, may my sacrifice not be in vain, the seriousness of his words weighing on the atmosphere. They are depicted from afar, silhouetted against the background of an elegant gazebo at night. Holding hands, a bond is formed between them. In a more light-hearted moment, Rena tilts her head in confusion, a simple, what? Slipping from her lips. Rin, now covering his face with his hand, looks confused by his words, prompting Ren to comment on his visible excitement. Rena playfully leans into Rin, teasingly admitting that she's grown quite fond of him, and he shyly turns away. Still covering his face with his hand, Rin admits that the attraction is mutual, a blush visible on his cheeks. They stand aside, Rena looking at Rin expectantly as he ponders how to phrase a growing feeling or confession. Finally, we see a chibi version of Rena with her arms crossed as she realizes that Rin didn't quite get the hint, sweat standing out on his forehead. In the night scene, Rena looks pensive under a starry sky, pondering something deeply as she says, well, there's gotta be a reason. Rena stands with a satisfied smile, expressing her lack of interest in a relationship, while Rin listens in the back. She happily admits, I don't plan to start a relationship. Looking out into the night, Rena declares her satisfaction at just being someone's dance partner, hinting at her independence and contentment. A single rose is delicately held, symbolizing a moment of tenderness and perhaps a gesture of affection in a good night. 
With her eyes closed, Rena savors the scent of a red rose, a gesture that can represent a moment of peace or a cherished memory. Rin reassures someone not to worry and to just enjoy the moment as he holds a rose, showing a desire for reassurance and a moment of peace together. Rina's face lights up with a soft smile. Her eyes are closed. She stands with a rose, allowing time to dictate the course of events. Rina and Rin are spending quiet time together in the garden when Rin smells a rose, indicating a moment of connection between them. A man stands, being watched through a window, his posture and attire suggestive of formality and a hint of concern or contemplation. The same man appreciates the beauty of the night, quietly exclaiming, What a wonderful night! suggesting a sense of peace or reflection. A stern man with slicked back hair can be seen looking disapprovingly, as if thinking. His face is stern, with a hint of contempt or disappointment. A character with white hair and a strikingly pale complexion holds a glass of wine while looking out the window. They boldly declare their superiority in an aristocratic environment. In a large hallway, a white-haired figure stands before a man with pink hair and formal attire. The pink-haired man warns the other with a smug smile, hinting at the threat if they are caught uninvited. A white-haired person makes a toast to something unspoken with a cocky attitude. Their facial expressions are relaxed and confident, suggesting that they are unfazed by the advance warning. A tense confrontation ensues as the pink-haired man interrogates the other about the child's survival, accusing them of lying about the alleged victim. The white-haired figure mocks the pink man's concern for the child, taunting him with a casual demeanor that suggests he is unfazed by the accusations. The pink-haired man expresses his fear of being exposed in his plans by a hero from the southern lands. He looks desperate as he tries to defend his position. A dramatic revelation unfolds as the white-haired man seems unconcerned about the pink man's concerns and nonchalantly turns away, hinting at indifference to the threat. In a shocking twist, the grizzled character is told that his daughter has already witnessed something significant. His eyes widen in surprise, revealing a vulnerability that was previously hidden. The story ends with a gray-haired character recalling the pivotal moment when his daughter recognized him, a memory filled with emotion and perhaps regret. In an elaborately decorated room, Rena stands before a tribunal of shadowy figures, and across from her sits an elderly man. The tension is palpable as they seem to be judging her. In the close-up portrait, Rena is smiling gently, her eyes sparkling. She is adorned with an elaborate necklace that hints at her importance. A confrontation unfolds under the starry sky. A young man accuses an older man of turning a sacrificed child into a monster, their silhouettes stark against the backdrop of space. The woman expresses shock to the austere-looking man, recalling that her daughter made it to the imperial court on her own, doubting his understanding of the significance of this. The man, stiff and formal, confidently reflects on his daughter's belief that she can stand up to them, his profile sharply defined against the night sky. In a semi-dark room, a woman advises her husband to meet her daughter in person and find out her wishes, assuring her that her daughter will definitely respond. Their exchange increases. The woman firmly declares that her offer is not advice but an order and the man listens attentively. The man, now alone, seems thoughtful and resigned under the opulent chandeliers of the Great Hall, the weight of the decision resting on him. In close-up, an emotional man with sweat on his forehead contemplates the terrifying order he's been given, feeling the gravity of the moment. Cloaked Reyna is depicted in an ominous red atmosphere, haunted by proclamations that she must be the right child the emperors seek, her eyes wide with fear or revelation. A cloaked figure stands against a dark, starless sky, and a small child cries in the foreground. This figure did something grand for a power equal to that of an emperor, secretly leading countless little souls to an unknown fate. A cloaked figure looks alone at the crimson-pink sky at the edge of the abyss, the scene shows a strong desire to equal the emperor, but she is only known as the mistake. A character with long pink hair, seen from behind, looking out the window at a man in white. The text implies that they must hide the truth about selling their souls. The same pink-haired character looks at the viewer with a serious expression, admitting his involvement with the mistake. Two new characters walking and talking in a large hallway, a mustachioed man in military gear and a pink-haired Rena wearing a uniform. They discuss the high-profile incident of the previous evening involving the southern lands. 
Rena confidently declares that she defended her honor and won, surprising her companion, a senior military officer. Older man with a distinctive mustache officially declares Rena, a representative of the Southern Lands, advising her to act accordingly. With a forgiven version of the two chibi characters, where Rena seems to be teasing an older man who looks clueless, side by side in a windowed corridor, Rena and a senior soldier respond to a declaration of war. The text suggests imminent action and a call to arms. The contrast between the legs of the two characters, emphasizing the difference in their physique and perhaps their status or readiness for what is to come. In a large hall filled with purring shadows, a stern man in a military uniform with a sense of authority speaks to Rena, a girl with bright pink hair expressing his disappointment at her actions. Rena, with hair like pink flame, stands small in front of a tall figure wearing a dark fur-lined coat, the intensity of his gaze suggesting a pivotal moment in the confrontation. A close-up of the same man shows his youthful features and stern expression, with a mixture of surprise and attention in his eyes. A scene unfolds where Rena, along with a grizzled, decorated officer, appears surprised by the sudden announcement of a character known as Mr. Rin. Against a soft, glowing background, a young man from the past seems to be reminiscing, a nostalgic smile softening his sharp features, while at the same time recalling a place that is more present in his heart than ever. With a nonchalance that cuts through the solemnity, Rena seems to see the stern man in a new, more appealing light, perhaps revealing a softer side to his stern demeanor. In a display of full regalia, the group stands in formal dress, a collective strength in their unity as they are described as the North in full assembly, hinting at a gathering of significance. A man with a regal bearing and a sharp gaze steps into the spotlight, commanding attention with his presence, his penetrating and focused gaze. Seen up close, Rena displays a mix of determination and apprehension, her pink eyes a window into her inner turmoil amidst her opulent surroundings. Finally, a tense moment captures Rena as an older, authoritative figure orders Rena to stay close, an air of protection or control hovering between them. Rena, clad in a striking blue cloak, is positioned centrally between the two distinct groups, creating a visually compelling contrast and hinting at an inevitable interaction or confrontation. When men in black suits blow ceremonial horns in the background of a celestial event, it evokes the feeling of an ancient ritual or an important announcement. Rena stands with dignity at the far end of a magnificent corridor as rows of people kneel before her, a clear demonstration of her respectable position in this society. The emphasis on Rena's elegantly laced ballet flats against the refined floor highlights the grace and precision expected of her role at the ceremony or event she is attending. Walking down the hall in her flowing dress, Rena passes the kneeling figures, her movement unobstructed, emphasizing the respect and authority she wields. Rena sits on her throne, her posture conveying a mixture of contemplation and longing, hinting at the loneliness that accompanies her lofty status in the midst of grandeur. In a gentle but commanding tone, Rena tells someone to stand up, her expression soft but firm, indicating her role as a respected and kind leader. Rena, sitting nonchalantly on her throne, engages in light conversation with a servant, her casual demeanor contrasting with a formal setting that hints at her comfort in power. Surprise and amusement paint Rena's face as she jokes about the occasion of their meeting, showing her sharp mind and the friendship she shares with her assistant. During an official speech on a historic day, a man with papers talks about the centenary of the empire, and Rena watches from her throne, embodying the living history and traditions of her position. The purple-haired character looks up with a satisfied expression as he speaks of a new place ignited by a deity just underground. Rena, with pink hair and intense pink eyes, stands with an inquisitive expression on her face, uttering a single word in question. In a large room, a character on a throne proclaims the conquest of the region known as the Land of the Dead under the command of their majesties. An elderly man decked out in military regalia is praised for winning the war against the dead and granted a wish of his choosing. The same dignified man bows his head respectfully, addressed by his title, which indicates the weight of his achievements and service. Standing before the throne, the elder declares his desire to entrust his duty to a more reliable generation, which involves a change in leadership. Wielding the sword, the character in front of the throne asks to whom he should pass responsibility, indicating a decision to be made. Rena stands next to the elder, staring ahead with a serious expression on her face, as if ready to face whatever comes next. 
The elder returns, asking the name of the young woman with the sword, showing a need for recognition. Bowing deeply, Rena introduces herself by her full name, showing both respect and a sense of formal etiquette. Rena, with a determined look and a sword blocking her view, seems ready to face whatever challenge comes next. The word flap floats above it. Looking up at the stars, Rena stands in her uniform, an emblem of her determination. Her pose speaks of the calm before the storm. She announces her trials as she stands proudly in the Great Hall, showing her determination to live up to her name. Rena declares that she will take matters into her own hands, denouncing herself as a mere pawn, her eyes fierce with intent. Firmly taking on the challenge, Rena is ready to risk her life, her expression combining determination and seriousness. The respectful address highlights Rena's grace as a leader as she stands in the majesty of her surroundings. Struck by the unexpected event, Rena's eyes widen in surprise, and the opulent hall around her adds to the drama. Accompanied by an older, dignified man, Ren walks purposefully, their step indicating a shared mission. Rena looks on in confusion, her face questioning as she tries to figure out what's going on. The man politely asks to stop the traffic for a moment, his calm demeanor hinting at a serious discussion. Standing in a large and luxurious corridor is Rena, her pink hair in a twist, looking surprised. She exclaims, Really? in the pop-up tooltip. Then, smiling playfully, Rena turns to the invisible figure. Her words suggest a joke about formality, asking if it would be more appropriate to address her as a fishmonger. A stern-looking man with piercing eyes listens attentively. The severity of his expression indicates that he is deep in thought or worried. In another scene, the same man admits a mistake. His words terse, revealing acceptance of the poignant truth revealed to him. Rena formally addresses the man, asking for his attention for a moment, assuring him that it won't take long. As they stand in the spacious hall, Rena looks away with a neutral expression, while the man stands nearby, attentive and calm. Rena speaks again, saying, Okay, as long as it's not hard, keeping her formal demeanor as the discussion seems to continue. They are sitting in a separate room with luxurious decor, signaling that a private and perhaps more candid conversation will soon take place. A man compliments Renee, perhaps on her appearance or actions in a room bathed in soft daylight. Finally, Rena looks pensive, looking away, her eyes downcast. She seems to be mulling over the conversation or pondering her next steps. In Rena's dimly lit room, a pink-haired girl wearing a military uniform looks surprised as she asks if she's been recognized. The man, with his neat hair and refined appearance, seems pensive, almost conflicted, as he wonders aloud whether he would recognize his own daughter. Rena's eyes widen in shock against the dark background, her expression one of disbelief and vulnerability. Sitting across from each other in a luxurious room, the man remarks on Rena's dangerous choice, his tone carrying weight. Rena, now standing, challenges the man, claiming he has gone too far. Her stance is firm, her expression defiant. The man, seemingly resigned, gives in with a simple, indeed you must, as he looks away. With his back to Rena, tension fills the room, a tense silence between them. A close-up of Rena's face shows her struggling to hold back a mixture of emotions, her eyes glistening in the dim light. Rena, sitting regal but visibly stunned, watches her husband's apology reverberate through the great space. Rena looks anxiously at her father, who solemnly pleads for her forgiveness, his eyes carrying the weight of his plea. In an elegant room, Rena sits in a commanding pose on a chair, facing her father, who is kneeling. Her posture suggests that she is in a position of authority, considering the situation. Rena looks away with a thoughtful expression, admitting that she's been waiting for this moment, hinting at a mix of emotions about the events unfolding before her. Kneeling before Rena, her father looks up in sadness, desperately seeking forgiveness, struggling with his actions and their impact on their relationship. The father, overwhelmed with emotions, laments that he does not believe that he will see Rena again, hinting at a past full of confusion and separation. As tears roll down his cheeks, the father expresses his fear that he may never see Ren again, indicating that he deeply regrets past decisions. Rena looks up in shock, her eyes wide with a mixture of disbelief and recognition, calling out to her father as she takes in the reality of their reunion. The moment is filled with emotion as Rena kneels down to be eye-level with her father, their closeness in this tender moment underlining the complexity of their pasts. Rena gives her father a wary look, stating that trust must be earned and hinting at past betrayals that may have included attempts on her life. 
Rena stands with a determined look as rain and thunder rumble in the background. Her eyes, filled with intensity, hint at an inner storm that matches the stormy weather. Rena's father asks her in a commanding tone what he should do for her. His face conveys a mixture of disappointment and concern as he anticipates her response. Rena turns away, her eyes downcast, giving off a sense of hesitation or sadness. Her profile against the background of the room decor suggests a moment of introspection. Rena emphatically declares her desire to live under her own name, a declaration that underscores her desire for autonomy and identity. Rena's father kneels before her, begging for official recognition of her existence. The power dynamic here is visually reversed, indicating a pivotal moment in their relationship. Rena's father looks down, dejected, admitting his inability to grant her request. His body language reflects a deep sense of defeat or powerlessness. With a sense of curiosity and confusion, Rena quietly asks, Why not? The expression on her face is a mixture of surprise and a desire to understand. In a dramatic twist, Rena's father reveals the bottom line. It's magic. His face, half-shadowed, reflects the dark revelation of this secret. Rena, surprised, repeats, Magic? The shock is evident in her wide eyes and slightly open mouth as she processes the information. Rena, looking directly at her father, repeats the word magic, again, this time with a mixture of realization and surprise on her face. Rena's father claims to have taken action against the Empress and enlists Rena, offering to dramatically change her fate if certain truths come to light. He solemnly vows to give Rena a new life, a significant departure from her current path, as he kneels before her with a determined look. In a luxurious room, he promises Rena a life with more privileges than her current noble status, a life comparable to that of the imperial family. Rena's eyes glow a supernatural red as she realizes the gravity of her father's words, the promise of a new identity, and the weight it carries. In a quiet, somber tone, Rena acknowledges the risk and expresses her willingness to accept the role her father has assigned her, even if it means becoming a mere tool. Rena confronts her father, questioning his true intentions and whether he wants to get rid of her, reflecting a deep insecurity about her worth and his affections. The father remains stoic in the rain, his expression hardening as he inwardly acknowledges Rena's ability to read his mind, showing the tension between them. He coolly orders Renée to speak her mind, masking any emotional turmoil he may be feeling with a calm demeanor. A close-up of Rena shows her contemplation and determination, hinting at the difficult choices and conversations she faces with her father. Seen from above, Rena's father ominously offers her a chance, symbolized by a hand gesture, hinting at an important decision or opportunity that lies ahead. In a dimly lit room filled with cold blue light, Rena, with pink hair and determined dark red eyes, stands resolutely, dagger held aloft. She demands that her father take her life. Her father, a stern man with slicked back hair, is taken aback by Rena's request, his face a mixture of confusion and concern, illuminated by the harsh light. Rena lays down the rules of the gruesome ordeal. Her father must act until the end of her song, and she vows not to retaliate or shirk. But there's a catch. If her father doesn't grant her request by the end of the song, Rena vows to turn the blade against him, asserting her determination with fierce eyes. The tension dissipates as Rena collapses into her father's arms, her strength fading, her eyes still filled with a mixture of determination and sadness. Her father hesitated, glowing dagger in hand, pondering Rena's existence and considering his next move, the room around them bathed in icy light. Rena kneels with her head bowed in surrender, but offers forgiveness if her father acknowledges her, the dagger resting passively in her hands. With a close-up of her father's face full of emotion and a hint of tears, Rena's challenge seems to reach his heart, evoking deep feelings. Wide-eyed, Rena pleads with her father, doubting the justice of their future actions, her face a mix of hope and despair. Finally, Rena, now standing over her kneeling father, questions the reason for his actions, her posture both regal and imperious, the light of the dagger reflected in her questioning eyes. On a starry night, Rena kneels on the cobblestones by the water, thinking. The peace of the scene is disturbed only by her questioning whisper. What? Suddenly, Rena finds herself sitting and looking around in confusion under the same night sky. She mutters to herself, surprised at her location and noting how completely unfamiliar everything is. Her confusion turns to fear as she gasps and steps back, her eyes wide in shock. 
The once peaceful night now seems threatening to her. Reina is stunned by the terrifying experience, the nature of which is unclear, something beyond comprehension, a blurring of reality and illusion. Sitting by the water, Reina looks down with a grim expression on her face. She plunged into deep thought. The calmness of the water reflects her inner restlessness. A kind stranger approaches Reina, leaning in to ask if she's alone, his face a mix of concern and curiosity. Later, a tender exchange takes place as Rena receives a coin from a delicate hand, the identity of the giver unseen. Rena sits timidly in her chair as the brave woman demands more money for her stay, while the man who found her looks on helplessly. Menacing figures are looming in the background, their eyes turning red in the shadows. They speak ominously among themselves, regarding Rena as an expensive prize. Cornered by the intimidating man, Rena pushes away from his arms, tears streaming down her face as she fiercely protests her innocence. Rena, a young girl with pink hair, claims to be Viscount Rubea's daughter and asks to be taken home. A burly man and a tattooed woman are shocked by her statement. The tattooed woman looks surprised and skeptical as she questions Rena about her claims about being an aristocrat, apparently intrigued by the younger girl's claim. A woman with tattoos and earrings seems suspicious and tests Rena, asking if she can write. Rena, eager to prove herself, confidently asserts that she can. Rena is sitting at the table, concentrating, pen in hand, diligently writing on a piece of paper. Her expression is serious and determined as she seems to want to prove her point. A tattooed woman reads a letter, her eyes wide with surprise. She comments on the grace of Rena's handwriting, comparing it to a cool midsummer dream, acknowledging the girl's grace. As the woman reads aloud, it becomes clear that Reina wrote the poem. She recites it, revealing that it is on the first page of a collection of poems, implying Reina's cultural background. The woman's demeanor changes to one of awareness and respect as she looks at the letter, finally convinced of Reina's aristocracy, recognizing her true status. In a dimly lit room, Reina sits alone, looking scared and vulnerable. She whispers for help, expressing her anguish and desire to escape from her current predicament. Rena is visibly distraught, questioning how her situation could have come to this, feeling betrayed by someone's claim to love, hinting at a deeper, more personal upheaval. Rena's face shows shock and tears when she hears her sister's voice. Her brother's arrival brings a mix of emotions, and she worriedly asks if her sister has learned anything new. In a dimly lit tavern, a seated woman in a red dress confidently corrects a standing man's mistake about noble titles, declaring that they are dukes, not viscounts. Leaning forward in surprise, a woman in a tavern listens as a man explains the duke's recent acquisition of land from the north, raising questions about possible financial motives. The striking pink-haired girl, Rena, looks on with wide eyes, a mixture of confusion and worry on her face as she hears the mention of her apparent funeral. The woman in the red dress reacts with shock and disbelief, her face contorted in confusion as she processes the sudden and strange revelation of the girl's supposed death. With a sly smile, the woman playfully ponders a thought, her face lit up with the idea she's entertaining, all the while keeping her intentions secret. At night, Rena stands scared and alone, her pink hair illuminated by the moonlight as she is told to be quiet and obedient. A woman in a red dress towers over Rena threatening her with a lifetime of punishment for disobedience, her face a mask of feigned sympathy and control. In a stone-walled room, a man tells an imposing woman that leaving Rena in a nearby building would be a wise decision, hinting at a deeper scheme. As the woman in red drags Rena to the exit, she tells the girl to stop shaking and leave quickly, showing her dominance and impatience. Rena stands small and alone in the vast echoing space and stares at the heavy wooden door, symbolizing the terrifying unknown she is about to face. Under the darkening sky, Ren, with tears in his eyes and a confused expression on his face, seems to be struggling with a sudden sad realization. From behind, Rena watches a group of people having a serious conversation, a look of concern on her face that suggests she is somewhat interested in their discussion. Hiding behind a stone archway, Rena looks out vulnerable, whispering questions about her father's arrival to save her, her words a mixture of fear and hope. With her hands clasped and her eyes filled with longing, Rena kneels in the doorway, wondering if the possibility of her father's return will bring her happiness back. With her back against the wall, a tense expression on her face, Rena seems to be on high alert, holding her breath as she waits for the outcome or arrival. She turns around in fright when an unexpected event or presence catches her off guard, breaking her vigilance. 
Looking over Rena's shoulder, the group she had feared was now advancing towards her, bringing the tense moment closer. Surrounded by his entourage, the leading man appears surprised as he utters the single word, courtiers, indicating a mixture of surprise and recognition. Rena's tearful face breaks into a relieved smile as she joyfully announces the arrival of the court king, hinting that her rescue is at hand. A woman in red, surrounded by guards, insists that anyone looking for a child must bring money. She gestures towards the crowded tavern, implying that it is full of crooks and liars, and again demands money in advance. The woman confirms to the questioning man that the child, presumably Rena, is indeed inside as they stand at the entrance. Rena appears from hiding, her eyes wide with anxiety, claiming that she is rightfully in the council building. Suddenly the woman in red was ambushed, her face contorted in shock as she was struck by an invisible force. Rena's eyes widen in horror, her mouth falling open as she realizes the danger she's in, mirroring the violence erupting around her. In the midst of the chaos, a powerful figure orders his men to defend the building so thoroughly that not even a mouse can escape. The tension builds as the group is instructed not to let anyone leave, emphasized by the urgency of the fiery backdrop. In the heat of the moment, guards with torches rush to fend off attackers at the arched entrance to the building. Finally, Rena sits silently in front of the glowing portal, the light illuminating her solitude in the dark room. Rena is kneeling on the ground, her figure shrouded in a white cloak against a background of falling snowflakes, creating an atmosphere of isolation. She looks deep in thought, her presence almost ethereal in the stillness of the snowy scene. Standing, Rena screams in pain, her tears reflecting the harsh light of the rain falling around her. Her pain is palpable as she looks overwhelmed by the situation, and the rain adds to her emotional breakdown. In contrast, Rena's subdued expression gives nothing away as she looks ahead. Her eyes, red and glowing, hint at a hidden depth of emotion behind her stoic appearance, enhanced by a single tear running down her cheek. Rena's father is sitting on the ground with his back to us, looking at a pair of large double doors. The room is elegant, decorated with a chandelier that casts a soft glow, illuminating her silhouette in the dim surroundings. The maid sat casually on the couch, saying in a bored tone, We've been in the yard for three days now. Her relaxed posture and the luxurious room around her contrasted with the longing expressed in her words. Rena holds a purple potion with a skull on it, the label indicating the first day of some important event. The swirling purple mist and her brooding gaze suggest that she is considering a serious and potentially dangerous decision. Holding a glass of champagne, Rena's face is clouded with sadness, the bubbles reflecting the turmoil she feels inside. Champagne on the second day is written in the frame, hinting at a holiday with a melancholy touch. The maid, with an interesting and slightly wary expression on her face, wonders what form Rena will take today. Her innocence and the dark figure looming behind her hint at a transformative and perhaps ominous event. The maid's shock is evident as she turns to the door, a mask of horror on her face. The darkness around her accentuates her fear, and the unknown that lies beyond the decorative door seems to be the source of her fear, from the socket, which glows intensely blue, while the rest of her face is shrouded in shadow. The scarlet letters around her convey a sense of urgency and anxiety, hinting at a dramatic climax. Rena, with her pink hair pulled back and wearing a lovely uniform, looks surprised when the maid with the black hair and bow asks her why she's back so early, since there's still a lot of work to do before the evening. Rena turns away thoughtfully as the surprised maid asks aloud what they discussed, only to be interrupted by Rena's cold request to keep her words. In the close-up, Rena's face is serious and pensive, while the maid looks at her with wide, worried eyes. Rena questions the maid directly, asking what the matter is and if anything happened again, to which the maid is surprised. With a gentle smile, Rena assures the maid that her eyes won't steal anything, amusingly adding that she met a cat. The maid panics, urging Ren to give the details of her conversation, demanding a quick answer. Rena sits relaxed on the sofa, dismissing the urgency of the conversation as a petty reproach, while the maid stands tense and worried. Rena calmly states that there is still no problem, keeping her composure as the maid listens intently. Caught off guard, Rena expresses her surprise at the elegant afternoon tea set, asking where the maid came up with such an arrangement. The maid, stunned and excited by the opulent space before her, can only utter an amazed wow when Rena asks where she managed to get all this. 
Rina is standing in an elegant room, addressing the maid with a serious expression, saying that she received a letter from a follower in the courtyard. The servant looks up in confusion, asking, What? In the kitchen, a maid shares her excitement about the letter with the other maids, throwing her arms wide in exclamation, That's the situation. To which the other maid replies with a laugh, Ha ha ha, really? The kindly maid hands the servant a plate of bread and a bowl, saying warmly, What a dear, take this. The servant takes the food with a happy and surprised expression on his face. Holding the plate, the maid looks dazed and teary-eyed, thinking she is determined and brave. The other maids continue their tasks behind her, oblivious to her inner turmoil. Walking down the corridor, the maid feels the burden of the growing expectations of those around her, contemplating the changes with a sense of burden and determination. Rena, covering her mouth to hide her laughter, informs the distraught maid that it was not a follower's letter, but a letter from the person who tamed the horse. The maid looks overwhelmed with confusion. Rena, bathed in sunlight, assures someone off-panel that she's here to talk, showing her intention to clear up any confusion directly. The maid leans against the counter, her face a mixture of hope and worry as she's been told the humans will be back soon. She asks, Bad people? Rena casually sits on the edge of the table, discussing the possibility of the humans appearing from a certain location, prompting a shocked reaction from the maid who asks, Your father? In a dramatic close-up, Rena warns the maid that if she thinks these people are dangerous, she must leave immediately, stressing the need for her safety. The maid looks worried and pensive. In a hushed tone, she asks the maid with ears if it will really be safe. An eared maid faces Rena, who sits regal but seems uncertain as she contemplates the safety of the unnamed subject. With a soft smile and closed eyes, Rena compliments that the question fits their style, subtly acknowledging it. Leaning closer, Rena whispers into the maid's ears, wondering if the situation isn't as dangerous as they fear. A maid with ears is busy doing laundry, concentrating on her task in a stone-walled room surrounded by linens and the tools of her trade. The eared maid looks on in surprise, her eyes wide at what we can't see, her previous composure breaking. An older gentleman, well-dressed and dignified, towers over an eared maid as she works diligently, his gaze heavy. The eared maid looks on in disbelief as the gentleman introduces himself as his housemate. A gentleman offers a eared maid a jar filled with colorful candies, asking if she likes sweets, his face illuminated by the glow of the jar. Standing in a dark room, a gentleman holds up a jar of candy with a gentle but mysterious look, an otherworldly atmosphere. A girl with large expressive blue eyes and black hair looks slightly sullen, her outfit reminiscent of a maid with ruffled white and blue accents. In the great hall, the audience gathers, dressed in red and gray robes, intently facing the lone figure standing in the center under the tall columns. A man in white and gold addresses an invisible crowd. He seems to be asking if the preparations of each military division are complete, indicating that an important event is imminent. Rena, with her striking pink hair and stern expression, stands in her blue military uniform among her fellow officers, conveying a sense of determined leadership. A young man in black military uniform stands solemnly before his comrades, creating an atmosphere of solemnity and anticipation. The same man, dressed in white and gold, unfolds a scroll against a background of mystical blue hues, symbolizing the grand announcement of the Empire. This man continues, holding wooden sticks and recounting today's proceedings, evoking a sense of ritual and solemnity. A blonde figure in a red uniform stands out against the background of the uniform, her presence marked by a grim but determined expression. Another man in black appears in a setting that appears to be a ruin, with a phrase that alludes to a history of strife and the appearance of the undead. Finally, Rena stands firm, announcing the start of the operation with a symbolic name, hinting at an important turning point or action. A row of stone slabs covered with glowing runes lies scattered in the frosty chamber. An inscription floats above, hinting at a sinister ritual capable of breaking the seal when someone praises the effort put into the preparation. A man with a gentle smile and impressive blue eyes stands on a bright red background. The pop-up has a single loaded word. It's time, indicating that a key moment is about to arrive. A close-up shows a lock of white hair and a dark red sword clenched in the back hand. Red symbols evoke a sense of urgency and perhaps a code or name, as a ritual or a confrontation seems imminent. 
A stream of red energy collides with a blue spectral force above the entangled circle. The energy forms a pillar with mysterious symbols that add intensity to the unfolding event. The abyss glows with fiery red and cold blue tones, bordered by uneven edges. It appears that a gateway or portal has been torn apart, suggesting a connection between two completely different realms. Rena, with bright pink hair, takes a defensive stance, sword at the ready. Her eyes shine with determination, and she's clearly ready to face whatever comes through the ominous rift. A huge, monstrous figure roars in defiance, its single red eye glowing menacingly. This creature appears to be a formidable adversary that challenges those who dare to stand against it. Grotesque creatures swarm among the infernal landscape. Their glowing red eyes and fierce expressions indicate that a fierce battle is about to take place. The shadowy figures clashed in desperate hand-to-hand -hand combat as the team, Kill them! echoes above the fray. The scene is chaotic, filled with the tension of a life-or-death struggle. With mad determination, Rena plunges her sword into the enemy, a powerful word accompanying the decisive blow. The tension of the battle reaches its peak at this climactic moment. Rena, with flowing pink hair, concentrates on drawing her bow, drawing the string against the eerie backdrop of a gloomy forest. Rena's eyes burn a fierce red as she confronts the advancing horde of grotesque creatures, her stance both defensive and ready to attack. A burst of action engulfs Rena, who slices through the air, her sword blazing with dynamic energy, slicing through the monstrous foes in front of her. Speaking firmly, Rena acknowledges the overwhelming number of her enemies with a determined expression, showing no signs of backing down. A stern-faced man in a dark uniform calls out a command, urging his allies to stand their ground against the coming darkness. The man with the sword strikes with precision and power, his blade piercing the monstrous foe, illustrated by the dramatic cuts and apparent defeat of the creature. The warrior in red stands against the chaos of battle, her sword at the ready as lightning crackles all around, emphasizing the intensity of the battle. Amidst the clash of steel and shadow, Reyna's determination rang out. She declares that the dilemma of survival should not be impossible. The ferocity of the battle is highlighted as Rena parries the creature's claw, her blade catching a glint of light in a quick defense. Surrounded by the aftermath, the soldier's face shows shock and fear, his posture slumped in the cold reality of the brutality of the battle. A young officer, drenched in sweat and fear, clutches his head, exclaiming in relief. His expression conveys that he has just been rescued from a dangerous situation. In a dramatic confrontation, a striking pink-haired young woman named Rena stands with a sword, her figure silhouetted against an explosion of dark energy, while a young officer looks on in awe. Rena, determined and commanding, declares that their southern squad will handle any enemy, expressing gratitude for their support in their moment of triumph. A young officer faces a formidable beast, its jaws open. The scene radiates terror and danger, his fate hanging in the balance. A senior, decorated officer looks down with shining eyes filled with determination or perhaps malice, the speech bubble indicating a critical, possibly climactic moment. In a moment of maddened determination, Reyna issues a battle cry, her sword at the ready against an unseen threat, her stance echoing the responsibility of a leader. A young man named Rin, solemn and determined, stands with a sword that seems to wield power, while a senior officer sits wounded, their surroundings hinting at a recent battle. With a hint of sarcasm, the decorated officer questions Rin's actions, hinting at a complicated history or twist in their relationship. In a tense fight, Rina looks shocked as Rin stoically walks away from the senior officer who is kneeling and pleading, indicating the turn of events. Rin, with his black hair and serious gaze, appears contemplative against a soft glowing background, hinting at the calm before or after the storm. Rena stands with a gentle expression on her face, her eyes shining with determination. Her pink hair is pulled back into a high ponytail, and she wears an elaborate blue military uniform with gold trim. In a dynamic pose, Rena grips her long sword tightly with both hands, ready for battle. Her uniform, a combination of blue, white, and gold, indicates her status. A dark figure with a sword looms behind her. Rena can be seen in the background, observing a dark puddle on the ground that indicates a recent battle. The environment is gloomy, and the tension in the air is palpable. A white-robed figure turns to speak, perhaps asking if they have encountered the last of their undead enemies. The tone is inquisitive, against the background of desolation. 
A man in a red uniform addresses the figure in a white robe, assuring them that the undead will not appear again. The scene is heavy with exhaustion and relief as the surrounding warriors rest. A figure in a white robe announces with a sense of triumph that they have endured and now the way is open. His expression is one of relief and determination. A white-robed figure stares into the fiery abyss, declaring that he will guard until the conflict in the province is over. There is a sense of duty and vigilance in their position. In a close-up, a silver-haired character expresses doubt as to whether the opponent will hear, hinting at a cautious optimism amid the uncertainty. An ominous silhouette with a single red eye looms in the darkness, hinting at an impending threat. The atmosphere is filled with foreboding and tension. A man with dark hair and a stern expression stands in the crowd, his face showing a sense of duty and readiness for what may happen. Reyna, with her pink hair and intense red eyes, seems to be in some trouble as she mutters about the King of the Dead. Standing amidst the haunting and fiery landscape, Rin calmly announces that the first hike will take place in ten days. With an air of solemnity, Ruvil calmly demands the crowns be removed, his presence dominating the scene against the blood-red sky. A monstrous face appears with burning eyes, and a cold speech prompt proclaims the certain property of the King of the Dead. Rin, dressed in military uniform with a tinge of concern on his face, confirms that no soldiers were injured, expressing relief that he hasn't felt fear in a long time. Walking through the snowy environment, Rin, followed by another soldier, agrees to return to the apartment, signaling his troops to head east back to the apartment. Rina halts her squad with a firm command, her expression a mixture of concern and authority, halting the soldier's movement. The soldier looks puzzled, reflecting the unexpected nature of Rina's order. Ruvil, radiating confidence and a sinister smile, recalls hearing about someone's audacity, his golden hair a stark contrast against the dark, cold background. Finally, Ruvil, standing in a commanding stance, confronts Rin, claiming his noble lineage and demanding respect, prompting a confrontation between the two. Rin stands under the starry night sky, looking ahead with a worried expression. He looks pensive and somewhat confused. Ruvid, a blonde man in a red military uniform, insists that he does not hang out with fools. His posture is stiff and his manner is contemptuous. Rin, now looking down, sinks into the shadows, his eyes glowing red with anger. He sharply declares, How dare a simple slave? Ruid, seen from behind, turns to answer Rin with, What? With insistence and frustration, Rina, the pink-haired woman, insists that her spine be straight as an arrow, her face contorted with intensity. Rin looks shocked and surprised as he sarcastically responds to Rina's insistence that knowing a language immediately makes one a citizen. Ruvid sneers, considering the eastern troops with impure blood to be inappropriate. His face twists in disgust. Rin advises to be careful with his words, a hint of warning in his stern profile against the night sky. Ruvid stands arrogantly with his saber at his side, his back to Rin, who is holding a glowing orb. Rina formally addresses Rin as Your Highness, indicating a gap in their social status. Rina gives someone a stern look, saying it's their first time meeting. Her sharp gaze and formal attire hint at the importance of this meeting. Rin, scared and sweaty, hears him being yelled at. His alarmed expression suggests that he may be surprised or worried by this unexpected admission. Rina turns away, confidently saying that this is indeed their first meeting. Her pose and rear view indicate a mysterious or significant discovery. Rin looks shocked, his mouth hanging open. A speech bubble above his head shows that he doubts the name Rina. His eyes are wide open, conveying his surprise or confusion. Rina firmly states to someone out of sight that they have indeed rescued his highness, the hero of the southern lands. Her assertive stance and bold speech hint at a critical debate. Rina turns her head slightly, profile towards us, and declares that her help is invaluable. Her tone seems sincere, and her direct gaze suggests deep seriousness. Close up of Rin, who seems to be thinking. His serious expression and sideways glance suggest that he is thinking about something important. A close up of Rena, who is smiling subtly and meaningfully. The soft colors around her hint at a more tender moment or realization. Rena, seen from behind, holds her hand to her cheek, saying that she shouldn't be thanked for her actions. Rin replies, we're coming back, and the third person agrees, saying yes. Sensing movement means they are about to leave. Rina questions Rin's ability to save. She still has her back turned. Rin's response is veiled, indicating either a rhetorical question or a conversation interrupted by an upcoming action. 
Rena stands aloof, and the blonde-haired Ruvid kneels in front of her, looking up anxiously. He addresses her formally, emphasizing the power dynamic between them. Rena teaches Ruvid about manners, referring to his lack of self-respect. There's a condescension in her words that suggests she holds the upper hand in their interaction. Ruvid, engulfed in a glowing, fiery energy, passionately declares that he has been affected by some personal poison. This visual clue points to a deeper stirring within him. Ruvid falls, clutching his head in despair as Rena watches. He makes a cryptic statement about upbringing, hinting at deeper issues related to parentage. Ruvid, having recovered, argues with the gray-haired man Rin about the potential of what they call. This indicates a conflict regarding the value of nurture over nature. Rena watches from afar as Ruvid argues against Rin, making her point. This scene was the climax of their heated discussion. Rena, seemingly detached, turns away from the dramatic scene where Ruvid appears to have been defeated, hinting at her possibly complicated feelings about the outcome. Rena talks to Rin, sardonically commenting on Ruvid's lack of self-awareness. Her words paint Ruvid in a rather pitiful light. Rin casually greets Rena after a long time apart, creating an atmosphere of uneasy meeting between them. Rin asks Rena if she missed him with a teasing smile. The question seems loaded, hinting at the complicated pasts of the two characters. In a half-dark room, someone is holding Rena's hand forcefully. Visibly uncomfortable, she looks down at her hand, which has a firm grip on the fishing rod. Rena stands in uniform, surprised and persistent, demanding to be let go. Her pink hair and military attire indicate authority. The white-haired person looks at Rena with a mix of concern and apology, suggesting they let go if she doesn't like the contact. Rena, with a stern face against the night sky, warns of the consequences if she is disturbed any further, hinting at a firm resolve. The white-haired person looks relaxed, but has a mysterious look, the twinkling stars behind them adding to their enigmatic presence. Standing in the vast hall, Rena confronts the gray-haired man, stating that she wanted to see them, indicating a complicated relationship. Rena's expression is a mixture of disdain and obligation as she declares that they are not close despite the reunion, putting on a tough exterior. The sound of a slap is heard. Rena's face has a mixed expression of shock and a hint of regret at the unfolding situation. The white-haired man holds his cheek in shock. Their reaction suggests trauma far beyond physical contact. Close and intense, the white-haired man confesses a desire to get to know Rena more deeply, signaling a turning point in their relationship. Rena confidently claims that she is not interested in anyone. Her gaze is piercing and her position is unwavering. A hand reaches out to offer connection or help, but it misses the other hand, leaving a sense of unfinished business. Rena gives the man in white a stern look and walks away, leaving a tense look behind. A building called Revy's Room stands under the night sky, with one window glowing, hinting at someone's presence inside. Rena, dressed in a royal purple dress, appears to be in a hurry confusing the maid who witnesses her sudden decision to leave. Rena, standing in a room filled with light, tells the maid to ignore her presence and asks for food to be served at a certain time. The maid nods in response to Rena's question about the origin of the candies, confirming that they are a gift from a courtier. Rena, with her pink hair and calm expression, reflects on her nocturnal wanderings, which seem almost otherworldly. Her thoughts are tinged with melancholy as she talks about her loneliness under the night sky. A cat-eared servant, full of determination, holds a jar of colorful balls. She exclaims with pride as she follows the instructions to the letter, her eyes shining with accomplishment. In a shadowy corner, a figure whispers that there is no danger to others, encouraging one to relax with a soothing, almost hypnotic suggestion. Looking into the mirror, Rena is reassured by the servant's confirmation of her youth. Her face breaks into a smile, pleased with this confirmation. The servant contemplates the upcoming meeting with the nobleman, pondering the appropriate greeting to make a good impression. With a stunned expression on her face, Rena urgently orders the servant to speak on topics of interest to the noble, emphasizing the importance of this interaction. Under a starry sky, Rena's words carry a weight of sadness as she talks about the emptiness that accompanies her at night. Dressed in elegant attire, Rena and Rin stroll through the moonlit gardens. Their silhouettes are a dance of grace and poise against the background of the night. Rin looks off into the distance, a look of concern on his face as he admits to losing his usual composure, hinting at a deeper turmoil within. With a gentle gaze fixed on the stars, Rina suggests presenting a front, perhaps a facade to hide her true feelings from the world. 
Rena looked surprised under the starry night sky, reacting to the unseen event with wide eyes that reflect a mixture of surprise and joy. Rena jokingly scolds Rin, comparing his behavior to that of a son of a dog in a playful manner that catches him off guard. Rin is stunned and slightly confused by Rena's remark, while she seems amused, smiling at her own comment. Rena quickly softens her taunt, wondering if puppy would be a more appropriate and cute term than her earlier joke. Rin, sensing the harshness of Rena's words, buries her face in her hands, resigning herself to the fact that the two terms are essentially the same. Rena reasons that while son of a dog and puppy have different connotations, the latter sounds sweeter, hinting at the playful yet affectionate bond between the two. Rena has a moment of realization and admits that Rena prefers the term puppy, hinting at a change in his perspective. Rin looks genuinely confused, asking Rena if she really enjoys ruling her province while looking out for her personal feelings. Rena confidently answers Rin's questions, confirming that she does take her role seriously, like it's a personal calling. Caught in a moment of vulnerability, Rin asks Rena if she's doing well in her duties, his expression showing genuine concern. Rena, with long pink hair, expresses concern, asking if anyone is worried about her. The night sky shimmers behind her, indicating that the evening is serene. Rin, a man with short black hair, assures Ren that he trusts her abilities, but hesitates, suggesting that he has more on his mind than he is saying. Together on a moonlit night, Rin asks if Rina has noticed anything that points to a shared experience or secret between them. Rin comments on the vast experience of the southern fishermen, perhaps hinting at the wisdom or knowledge Rina possesses, though she subtly acknowledges it. A close-up of Rin shows him deep in thought, his expression tense and serious as he ponders the current situation. Under the starry sky, Rin confesses her worries to Rennie, revealing her protective feelings for her. Rina looks off into the distance, pondering the comment that it doesn't look like any earthly battle, hinting at an otherworldly or significant conflict. She reassures someone that there is no need to worry, her smile belying the seriousness of her previous thoughts. Rena's demeanor changes when she admits that she was actually quite pleased, hinting at a personal victory or a positive turn of events. Rena stands alone, facing a blood-red eclipse in a dark forest, an ominous scene that portends danger or a pivotal event. Rena is suffering, tears streaming down her face as she emerges, her hand forcibly stilling, signaling a desperate situation. In the dark setting, Rena looks scared, her eyes shining unnaturally, hinting at fear or obsession. Rena stares in horror at someone whose eyes flicker ominously in the shadows, hinting at a menacing presence. Here, a figure comforts Rena in a desolate landscape with a speech bubble that indicates the bleak nature of their surroundings, described as the land of the dead. The two stand against a red sky, Rena looking weakened and another figure shielding us, their clothing hinting at a grim adventure. Rena turns away, a cryptic message hinting only that the Empress returned alive from this place, hinting at a terrible escape. As Rena falls through the darkness, the text mentions the many people who have been sent to this place, emphasizing the sense of doom. A sinister figure proclaims that the condition has been set, a speech hint hinting at a key moment in a larger dark scheme. Rena looks up, startled and pleading, the dialogue bubble possibly signifying an important revelation or a plea for mercy. Rena clutches her side, a grimace of pain on her face that could hint at injury or betrayal at a key event. The pink-haired Rena screams in panic, her eyes wide in terror. She is held in the arms of Rin, a man with black hair who appears to be rescuing her from a dangerous situation as they are both depicted against a background of pouring rain and an ominous red sky. Rena, still in Rin's arms, looks terrified as she is told in a menacing tone that she will become an executor-like beast. The night sky is red and the blood moon hangs low, adding a sense of inevitable doom to her predicament. With a determined look, Rin announces her intention to wait in her current location. He looks determined, with a hint of defiance in his eyes that suggests he's ready to face whatever comes next. Rena is shown falling through the air with an expression of despair, her body is limp and her pink hair sticks up as she descends, giving the impression that she's either been dropped or has fallen with no one to catch her. A ruddy with golden hair stands among the ruins, fires burning around him. He comments critically on the actions that have taken place, suggesting that a chaotic and violent scene has just taken place. 
With a serious expression on his face, Ruvid makes a bold statement that he always keeps the door open, which seems to mean being ready for any challenge or sticking to a principle regardless of the consequences. Ruvid offers to share a fun fact that points to a casual or perhaps disarming approach in the midst of what appears to be a tense or serious moment. Rin raises a finger, perhaps to make a point or impart wisdom. He has a slight smile that contrasts with the seriousness of the situation implied by his surroundings. A close-up of Rina shows her shocked and confused, her mouth open, as if she is about to question or express disbelief about something that has just been revealed to her. Rina stands in front of Rin, asking how he knew something, probably in response to the revelation or information he just shared that seemed to surprise or worry her. Rin stands in the cityscape with a look of determination on his face, as he declares that the action will shift to the east. Dressed in a dark uniform with glowing jewelry, Rin exudes confidence among his squad, his presence commanding and electrifying. Ruvid, eyes burning, gives a stern order to halt, the urgency of the North situation weighing heavily on his words. Ruvid berates the young man in white for his choice of words, his irritation evident, while the young man looks shocked at the rebuke. In the middle of a winter scene, Ruvid expresses his disbelief sharply when the young man explains that the hero wanted to be the first to deal with the fracture, which is why he is present. Descending into hell, a wolf-like creature and a cloaked figure decide to face the danger alone, and tension is in the air. Looking up, the young man in white respectfully asks Ruvid to return, addressing him with formality and respect. Rin shows stern determination in close-up, while Ruvid looks surprised and uncertain in the background. Ruvid's face is set in shock and anger, perhaps at an unexpected betrayal or sudden revelation. Surrounded by a fiery glow, Rin looks on with a mixture of determination and apprehension, the weight of the moment etched on his face. Rin, with short black hair, looks at him worriedly, doubting her own image. I look surprised. Is that me? He is in a place filled with a red, ominous glow. He touches his face doubtfully, pondering, a beer bubble. Is that me? There is a deep sense of confusion about his own identity. Rin watches the silver ring, noticing its lack of reaction. The dialogue indicates that he expects some kind of response from the ring. Surprised, Rin turns sharply to see a mysterious fireball and shockwave slicing through the red sky. In an action-packed scene, Rin gallops away at full speed, dodging the blast wave behind him, showing immediacy and determination. Looking back, Rin sees a blonde man named Ruvid riding a horse, confidently swinging a lightning-struck sword with a fierce expression on his face. Ruvid charges forward on his horse in defiance, his eyes shining brightly amid the chaotic battlefield. Turning to Rin, Ruvid grins menacingly, holding an electrified sword, the stormy sky accentuating his menacing presence. The narrative transitions to a serene setting, depicting a grand and ornate palace under a clear blue sky, in stark contrast to the earlier tension. In a large, sunlit office decorated with military insignia, Reina, a young woman with rose-pink hair, stands reverently in front of an elderly, decorated officer who sits behind his desk. She formally asks permission to ask a question, addressing him with great respect. Reina looks up, her eyes reflecting a mixture of determination and concern. She inquires about the status of a certain award, the Order of the Southern Richard, indicating that she is here on matters of deep personal or political importance. The officer, with a dignified appearance and a face that shows traces of experience, pauses thoughtfully before answering. His silence fills the space, signaling the importance of the conversation between him and Rena. The conversation takes a sobering turn as the officer reflects on the deep and lasting effects of war. His gesture of weariness and sadness indicates a deep personal connection to the subject, a feeling mirrored in Rena's expression of surprise and concern. In a calm posture, Rena listens as the officer, hands folded, discusses the current situation at the front, hinting at a discussion of military strategy or the status of the front, much to the obvious concern of both of them. Rena reacts with surprise when the officer talks about the condition of the isolated living quarters, hinting at problems or changes that might affect those living there. Returning to a wide survey of the office, the officer seems to be making a statement about the scions of noble families, perhaps linking the individual destinies of Rena and her companion to broader societal or familial obligations. Rena, with her pink hair, is shown holding out a mysterious book. 
She seems puzzled when she reads the text prompt, take this, and responds by asking, this? As Rena flips through the exquisite book, her eyes widen in shock. Her inner dialogue reveals her thoughts, acknowledging the significance of the family crests, but hinting at some deeper issues with a cautious, however, Rena's focus narrows on a page of text she can't make out. She scrutinizes it, and the passage reveals that it is about genealogy, mentioning the third son of the XX family, the fourth son of the Kifteen family. Annoyance flashes across Rena's face as she dismisses the crests as a pile of scribbles. Her face is stern and her tone contemptuous. Rena is standing in a large room with a serious expression on her face. She ponders the sinister motive behind the nobles, sending away unwanted children as if they were disposable. The family portrait is open, obscured, and eerie. Rena is invisible, but the text hints at a child who will suffer less, hinting at the bleak fate of the person in the image. Rena, with her back to the viewer, holds on to an older man who stands with a haughty look. The image suggests a complicated relationship, perhaps hinting at trust or manipulation. Tears stream down Rena's face as she is comforted by a man whose presence seems both protective and overwhelming. The text refers to forgiven drafts, perhaps metaphorically for a second chance or mercy. In a gloomy night scene, Rena stands alone, her posture determined but tense, suggesting that she is preparing for something dire or significant. A noble man in a uniform speaks, his face showing seriousness. He declares that he will not treat these children as discards, implying a change in their fate or a new mission for Rena. An elderly man with a distinguished military appearance tells someone off camera that he is the only one he can trust. He stands solemnly, conveying a sense of burden and responsibility with his request to care for some of the children, suggesting seriousness and concern for their well-being. Next, we see Rena with a stoic expression looking down at the document, stating that if it is your highness's will, she requests an audience. Her demeanor is serious and her posture straight, implying a disciplined and respectful attitude. Rena is then shown with a determined expression against a glowing background, affirming her commitment to follow the order and restore her army's good name. Her eyes are filled with determination, reflecting her dedication to the cause and the weight of the mission ahead. In the next scene, we see the flag of the Southern Army Training Hall, which symbolizes the place where Rena and her fellow soldiers hone their skills. The setting is quiet, but speaks of the rigorous training that takes place there. Rena then stands firmly with her back to the viewer, ordering someone to step back. Her posture is commanding and the atmosphere is tense, indicating a serious confrontation or a moment of assertive leadership. The perspective changes to see Rena on the rise addressing a group of soldiers. The vantage point emphasizes its central role and the attention it draws to the troops gathered around it. The young man expresses his protest against recognizing Rena as a commander, his face a mixture of anger and defiance. He challenges her authority and his posture shows his willingness to face the challenge. Rena reacts in shock, her eyes wide and her mouth open, showing her surprise at her team's opposition. The intensity of her expression conveys the unexpected nature of the confrontation. The young man questions the assembled soldiers, implying that they must obey their highness's wishes. His assertive stance and raised fist emphasize his call to duty and loyalty. Rena finally questions the reason for refusing to accept her as commander, her eyes narrowed and serious. She demands an explanation, standing her ground despite disagreement. A man in a military uniform stands in disbelief, saying they can't trust anyone. His expression is tense, reflecting the seriousness of his words. The same man now reasons that the person is too young and his background is unknown, adding to the mistrust. He looks conflicted and harsh. Turning away, the man reveals to another person, presumably Rena, that they are a woman. The revelation seems significant, and it carries an undertone of shock or accusation. Rena looks surprised and worried as she silently asks what she should do now. Her alarmed expression and body language indicate that she is troubled by the recent discovery. Showing disappointment, the man makes a face and comments on the audacity of the situation. His face is mixed with anger and resentment. The tension builds as the man with glowing eyes clenches his fists, ready to face the challenge. The atmosphere is tense with anticipation. Rena, with her back turned, confidently declares that she too can be a hero despite what happened. She radiates a sense of determination and defiance. A pensive Rena holds the gem, pondering its meaning. 
She looks pensive and somewhat upset. Rena, now looking directly at the viewer, asserts that she has the same physical abilities as the others, indicating a willingness to prove herself. Amidst the stormy background, a dark horse rears up against a fiery horse with figures ready for battle, evoking the feeling of an epic confrontation. Ruvid stands with a fierce glare, electricity crackling around him as he fiercely warns not to advance or he will burn the other person. His eyes glow a menacing pink, and his voice seems to echo menace through the fiery scene. Rin replies with a determined and somewhat amused expression that if the threats are intolerable, you might as well be ready to bite back. He holds a sword, the blade of which reflects fiery light, hinting at an imminent clash. Ruvid's face contorts with fury. His teeth are bared. The background is ablaze, reminiscent of a tense battlefield, containing the raw fury of Ruvid's howl, which seems to be both a battle cry and an expression of his inner storm. In the heat of battle, Rin moves with agility, his figure almost like a ghost amidst the chaos. He charges ahead with focused precision, seemingly unaffected by the explosive scene around him. Wide-eyed and open-mouthed, Ruvid looks startled as he asks what's going on, perhaps caught off guard by Rin's movement or the unexpected turn in the battle. As Rin advances, Ruvid, caught off guard, can only exclaim in shock. His eyes are wide, reflecting the flames that surround them, emphasizing the intensity of the moment. Rin charges forward on his horse, his frame oozing confidence and control, and Ruvid looks at him in surprise, his posture suggesting that he is bracing himself for the impact of Rin's bold step. The scene cuts to Ruid watching Rin gallop away, the latter with his back to the viewer as he makes a strategic retreat, leaving a trail of dust and confusion in his wake. Ruvid stands after the fight, under a dark, ominous sky. His stance is one of calm contemplation, the former chaos now replaced by a tense silence, signifying a temporary calm before the storm. Rin's expression is one of startled realization. Dramatic lighting and harsh shadows cast across his face heighten the tension, leaving the viewer wondering what pivotal moment just occurred. Rin and Ruvid stand in front of an eerie, glowing castle bathed in the ominous light of a red sky. Foreboding fills the air. Ruid, looking at the castle, remarks on its strangeness, to which Rin reacts thoughtfully, perhaps pondering the looming challenge they face. The castle looms, imposing and mysterious, without gates or paths, as if it is impossible to enter, creating a scene of mysterious isolation. Against the background of a fiery sky, it turns out that this castle is located in a land where only the dead live, which adds a terrifying layer to the story. Rin's face shows shock and fear, suggesting that they have encountered something terrible, confirming the castle's sinister reputation. A dark revelation emerges that this is the abode of a king among the dead, casting a shadow of terror over the duo's quest. In panic, as their nightmare seems to begin again, indicating that they are trapped in a horror from which they cannot escape. A grotesque creature with a gaping mouth is revealed, exemplifying the nightmarish reality Rin and Ruvid find themselves in. Rin is stunned, shocked at the unexpected turn of events as Ruvid appears to scream in terror, hinting at the seriousness of their dire situation. Rin stares out the window at the reflection of the ship in the glass, pondering a strange omen that may herald the next chapter of their adventures. In a gloomy landscape, a majestic castle stands under a crimson sky. Its shape gives the impression that all the ghosts have gathered within its walls. Two riders on horses carefully move along the snowy path under the same eerie sky. The riders, one blonde and one dark-haired, seem concerned about the wide, menacing blizzard they've been through. In an office with a large desk, a dark-haired man, Rin, talks about feeling too detached from the face of the earth. Blonde Ruvil stands in front of him and listens attentively, Ruvil replies, noticing the oddity since Rin left the room, a tinge of concern on his face. Rin's face showed shock as he realized that only 15 minutes had passed, defying his sense of time. Rin's expression hardens in disbelief as she contemplates how little three hours has passed, suggesting a time warp. The silver-haired character calmly reveals that time flows differently in the province, implying mystical control over its flow. Rin, in his dark attire, stands stunned as the words about the altered time stream prove to be true, adding a layer of urgency to the atmosphere. Rin, towering over Ruval in the daylight-drenched room, receives unspoken information, evidenced by Ruval's solemn expression. 
Ruval, looking surprised, delivers another new piece of information, potentially a twist in their current situation. In the frosty room, Rin stands before Ruvid and asks, What else? with an air of anticipation. Ruvid, turning to the side, utters a weak oi, as if caught off guard or in thought, adding to the tension of the moment. Beneath the cosmic backdrop, Rin's sharp gaze pierces forward as he delivers serious news. The Iota Knight attacked Miss Rena with a sword. Reported that the wound is serious. His face reflects the seriousness of the situation, emphasizing the urgency of the matter. Fear paints Rin's face as he learns of Rena's injury. Is Miss Rena hurt? He exclaims. The words coming out in shock and concern, emphasizing his emotional involvement in Rena's well being. Ruvid returns with an expression of disbelief and concern, his simple, no, revealing a mixture of confusion and denial, perhaps trying to accept the grim reality presented to him. Rin stands in the cold, his gaze fixed on something off-frame, reporting the brutal attack. The attacking knight has been punished by Miss Renu and is in serious condition. The statement provides for a tough response to guilt. In a contrastingly warm and elegant room, Rina's detached comment, Is this the beginning of a cover-up policy? Stands next to her placid sip of tea, hinting at political machinations behind the scenes. Amidst the golden glow of the room, a cat-eared servant shouts energetically, their actions and words lively and bold, as if telling an energetic story, bringing a sense of dynamism and humor to an otherwise serious narrative. The maid stands triumphantly over her invisible enemies, demanding, Leah? Have you finally ordered these Bespredelschiks? Her vivacious demeanor is a stark contrast to the somber events described earlier, bringing a bit of whimsy to the story. Rena listens quietly, holding the cup to her lips, reflecting on the past event. These are all stupid rumors. That knight himself fell. Her statement, which dismisses the rumors, reveals a secret layer of the unfolding drama. The maid reacts with surprise and horror, her, ah accompanied by a panicked wave that captures her shock at Rena's confession, her previous confidence seemingly shattered by this unexpected revelation. In a room decorated with a golden motif, Rena stands with a maid holding a cup. They trade words about a scarier past versus a potentially organized future, pondering whether there is a plan behind recent events. Rena, with her eyes closed, seems to be enjoying a cup of tea. Her internal monologue reveals her concern for the filcher chief and a group of knights, suggesting political intrigue. Sitting across from the maid, Rena holds a cup while the maid reads a letter. Rena's realization leads to the revelation of a formal dinner invitation from the cardinal, which seems like a major event. A close-up shows Rena's surprised reaction as a small blue flame grows from her head, an unusual and magical event that emphasizes her shock. The camera focuses on an elegant invitation with mysterious symbols at the top and text at the bottom inviting Rena and the others to a formal dinner, signifying an event of great importance. Rena is standing in front of a massive, ornate door that indicates the entrance to a large venue where a formal dinner is likely to take place, adding to the sense of anticipation. When the door opens, Rena appears in full dress, looking forward with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation, ready to step into the unknown of a formal dinner. Rena enters the spacious dining room, where she is greeted casually, but the atmosphere is formal, indicating the high status of those present. The hall is shown from above with a large table set for a meal, creating a sense of scale and formality. Rena stands out with her bright outfit against the dark colors of the hall. The young man glares at Rena, highlighting a possible tension or important dynamic between them as she stands beside him. Rena stands with a surprised look on her face and a bubble saying, Huh? She seems surprised or confused. In the bright room, Rena hears from Ruval that there are rumors about her close friendship with the Order of the Polisians. Ruval's tone seems playful, perhaps teasing Rena about this connection. Rena, sitting across from Ruval, directly asks him why he summoned her, a mixture of curiosity and suspicion on her face. Ruval, casually sprawled out at the dinner table, scornfully wonders why she asked, assuming he thinks the reason is obvious or unimportant. With a close-up on the wine glass, the dialogue foreshadows an upcoming, fully prepared campaign in the province, hinting at significant events to come. Rouville holds up his glass, declaring the importance of the rear guard detachment in the first march. He looks confident, perhaps with strategic plans in mind. 
Rena looks down, determined, declaring that she will not take command of the squad. Her behavior shows determination and perhaps frustration. Another character, a woman with amber eyes and blonde hair, appears stunned with an exclamation in the speech cue that signals a dramatic revelation or incident. Rin, a man with black hair, also shows a shocked expression. His wide eyes and open mouth suggest that he is witnessing something strange or disturbing. Rena's eyes glow bright red as she looks up, the text 79% floating near her face, possibly indicating a significant change or realization. A pink-haired Rena is reflected in a mirror, contemplating her next move, with the text implying that she seeks to regain her lost honor. Her eyes radiating a red hue indicate a supernatural element or deep emotion. Rena is sitting at a meal with two men and a conversation ensues where one man, perhaps questioning authority, asks if he has received an order. A close-up of Rena looking pensive suggests an autonomous entity in need of consent, hinting at a complex situation involving consent and action. The scene shows a man expressing shock or realization, wondering if Rena is behind the actions being discussed, with a revealing undertone. 6. Rena comments on the rumors about her, suggesting that her actions had significant, possibly unpleasant consequences for the princes. In a dimly lit space, a man speaks of inevitability and asks what to do next, implying a humble attitude towards the situation they see coming. A stern-faced man looks worried, looking off to the side as if pondering the implications of recent events or revelations. Rena, looking straight ahead, accuses someone of manipulative actions with intent to harm, demonstrating her understanding of deceptive conspiracies. The final image focuses on a man in a dark room, his face partially in shadow, suggesting a secret or perhaps intense conversation. A character with striking blue hair whispers for help, eyes downcast to convey a sense of vulnerability and urgency. In an opulent setting, a man with white hair and elaborate gold clothing confidently offers to arrange a dance, exuding a sense of confidence and capability. Two people are sitting at a luxurious dining table. The speaker mentions the arrival of the prince and the hero in the province, alluding to the distinguished guests among them. The white-haired character seems shocked, putting a hand to his cheek as they tell the others that the aliens described an extremely strange landscape, expressing disbelief and curiosity. The faces of the characters at the dinner table show surprise, and the one named Rena is looking at her, her expression a mixture of confusion and anticipation. The white-haired man makes a strategic suggestion, indicating that he prefers to attack familiar enemies first, demonstrating a thoughtful and tactical mindset. Rena, with her signature pink hair, looks skeptical, her eyes narrowed, and the caption suggests doubt or doubt about someone's intelligence or intentions. In a calm atmosphere, the white-haired person indicates that they have plans for the new year, suggesting that preparations or celebrations are being considered. Rena's three dots in the text prompt convey a moment of silence or hesitation, often used in narrative to indicate uncertainty or tension. A dramatic scene unfolds with a silhouette witnessing a powerful, silent war atop a mountain, creating a scene of conflict and tension. A young man with brown hair is visibly distraught, his hands clutching his head as tears and sweat stream down his face in panic, his mouth open in a silent scream against an ominous background. A human silhouette is framed against a swirling red miasma, Hordes of distorted figures writhing behind them, creating a tense atmosphere of imminent doom and confrontation. The grotesque, sharp-fanged creature is in the midst of a ferocious attack, its mouth wide open in a predatory snarl that adds a sense of terror and urgency to the scene. With her signature pink hair, Rena is shown in a powerful pose, her weapon glowing with energy, emphasizing a moment of fierce action and determination. A harsh battlefield is opened, littered with the fallen. Rena stands thoughtfully as the sole victor amid the quiet horror of war's aftermath. A gray-haired character with a playful expression casually talks about past battles with newcomers, his casual tone belying the seriousness of the events he's talking about. The same hero touches his chin with a meaningful smile, hinting that lessons had to be learned in these stormy times. Rena's profile is shown in thought, her eyes downcast, suggesting a pause for reflection in the midst of the unfolding events. Viewed from behind, Rena is confronted by a seated character who looks at him with interest, a pop-up above him indicating that he wants to hear her choice, adding to the sense of the pivotal moment. In the close-up, the gray-haired character's face is partially covered, his eye peeking out with a mischievous glint, adding to the mystery of his playful demeanor. 
Reina, with her distinctive pink hair, expresses her willingness to lead a military campaign, considering it a great honor, and is also willing to ask for a favor in return. Ruvid, a man with silver hair, is surprised and asks about the nature of Rena's request, a mixture of curiosity and concern on his face. Standing firm, Rena orders the date of the military operation to be rescheduled by two days, her eyes showing the seriousness of her order. A close-up of Rena shows her determination, her eyes shining with unwavering determination, indicating the importance of the adjustment she was asking for. Shot in a tight shot, Rin looks confused and unsure, reflecting the sudden nature of the change of plans. Ruvid is shown with a mixture of shock and contemplation, his face quietly questioning the reason for Rina's sudden decision to change the timing of the campaign. At night, under a serene moonlit sky, Rin and Rina sit together, perhaps contemplating the challenges ahead and a quiet nighttime conversation. Ruvid, with hair that shines under the starry sky, doubts the reasons for such a sudden change in the date of the campaign, his face marked with concern. A close-up of Rena with a fierce look suggests that she has an important reason for her request, leaving us to wonder what prompted her decision. The scene changes to a peaceful nighttime setting where Rin seems to urgently ask Ren why the campaign date needs to be moved, his face filled with anxiety and a need for understanding. Under the night sky, Rena speaks expectantly, expressing her hope that her father will have enough time to prepare another dress, her eyes shining with the excitement of the unknown. Rin sits with a grim expression, his pristine uniform contrasting with Rena's vivaciousness. He confronts Rena with his realization that she knew it was a trap all along, his words hanging in the tense air. Rena's pose, relaxed and confident, suggests that she relishes the challenge, mentioning that the East still maintains a fighting stance, her gaze fixed on something beyond the present. Rin acknowledges the difficulty of their situation, a hint of pain in his eyes, while Rina looks at him with a mixture of apology and mischief, her innocent exterior belied by a strategic mind. As the scene unfolds, Rina insists there's no need to apologize, her eyes wide with seriousness, implying a deep understanding that comforts but mystifies Rin. Rin stares out into the night, intrigued by the complexity before him, his curiosity peaked as he watches the events unfold like a chess player engrossed in the game. Reina probes Rin with a direct question, trying to figure out how he feels about her, her eyes twinkling with curiosity and a hint of vulnerability. Rin is stunned, his face a canvas of confusion and introspection as he ponders Rina's unexpected request. In the tranquil garden setting, Rin, with a low-key demeanor, calls the situation weird, while Rina, dressed in a burgundy dress, listens intently, her attention undivided. Rena contemplates Rin's observation with a contemplative gesture, her eyes closed as she ponders the curious dance of their interaction, the night enveloping them like a shroud. Rena looks on in surprise, her eyes wide and glistening. The text hint says Rena, meaning someone has just addressed her or caught her attention. Rin stands under the starry sky with a serious expression on her face. He says seriously, I trust you, but I hope you're not in pain. His anxiety is palpable, creating a gloomy mood. Rena stands with a gentle smile, looking straight ahead. A language cue shows her reply, I hope you don't get hurt either, echoing the sentiment of mutual concern. Rena, closing her eyes, expresses her hope that Rin will not be hurt. Her calm face reveals a deep sense of care and concern for his well-being. Rena's eyes are strained as she urges someone to listen carefully to her words. This is a key moment where she emphasizes the importance of her message. With a stunned expression on his face, Rin learns of the military expedition that is to take place in two years. The seriousness of the situation was clear from his wide open eyes. A young maid holds on to Rina's dress in a room named after Rina. It is a quiet moment, perhaps of comfort or guidance, in an elegantly decorated room. An older man, possibly military, expresses disbelief at the solo expedition. His surprise is marked by a raised eyebrow and a hand gesture. Rena stands confidently, and the maid looks at her. The dialogue reveals Rena's decision to go on the journey alone without an entourage, assuming the role of vanguard. The same man in military uniform seems to have never heard of such a thing before, as evidenced by his wide eyes and the tone of his words. This is a historical moment of defiance or innovation. The girl with pink hair, Rena, confidently asserts that every business has a beginning. Her expression is determined and her posture is straight, 
indicating that she is ready to start a new business. In a lavishly decorated room, a man wearing a military uniform with gold epaulets speaks to Rena, hinting that she will be both the first and the last to make a certain choice, asking who else would dare to do so. His stance and expression suggest a combination of amusement and defiance. Rena, putting her hand on her chin, smiles wryly and claims that being unique in history is an even greater honor for her. Her demeanor conveys pride and a hint of sarcasm, revealing her individualistic and confident character. The man jokes that their time together was purely for fun and regrets not bringing at least a cat's paw with him, implying that the situation should not be taken too seriously. His casual body language suggests that he is trying to lighten the mood. A girl in a maid outfit with cat ears asks if the man is worried about their plan. Her wide eyes and surprised expression indicate that she is unsure about her husband's concern and the seriousness of their situation. The man, clearly annoyed, throws up his hands in disbelief, his face contorted with disappointment. The situation seems to have taken a turn that he considers absurd or unexpected. Rena, bowing respectfully to her husband, is reprimanded for her earlier remarks. The man's stiff posture and stern expression indicate his authority and perhaps his disapproval of Rena's previous behavior. The man dismissively says goodbye, Your Highness, in a formal but cold manner, while Rena watches from behind. The tension between them is palpable in the elegant setting of the room. In the final conversation, Rena pleads for trust, her gaze sincere and pleading as she looks at her husband, indicating a crucial moment of vulnerability and the need to believe in her abilities. In a large room, an elderly man with dignity, dressed in an elegant uniform, silently ponders. His facial expression is pensive, his thoughts seem heavy. Beside him, a young woman with pink hair and sparkling eyes, also in a military uniform, watches with gentle trust. Her demeanor is calm but persistent. A man, perhaps a high-ranking officer, finally speaks, trying to understand Wren. His tone suggests a mixture of humility and determination to bridge the gap of misunderstanding. Rena answers modestly with a soft smile, her eyes closed and a faint expression of satisfaction on her face. She seems to be enjoying her personal victory. In an emotional twist, a young woman with pink hair, Rena, stands with her head bowed, expressing her victory in soft words. It is a personal moment of triumph, filled with a mixture of humility and pride. Beneath the dark arches, Rena strides forward with purpose, her cape billowing behind her. A figure is waiting for her in the distance, standing alone in anticipation. The silver-haired man turns to Rena with a smile, trust and expectation in his words. He seems to convey confidence in Rena's abilities. Among the sea of people in uniform, Wren stands out with his distinctive pink hair and authoritative stance. She appears as a central figure who holds the team. Finally, the same silver-haired person, now revealed to be a figure from the past, speaks of glory and virtue his words directed at Reyna in the moonlit open space. A man with silver hair looks forward, his eyes full of determination and hope. He seems ready to embark on a new journey or challenge, his face set on the future. Rena stands before a stormy sky, her back to the viewer, overlooking a coal-strewn landscape and a crowd in shadow. Rena jumps into the abyss of red light, her cape fluttering as if diving into danger. With glowing red eyes, Rena stares forward with a stern expression, hinting at determination against the ominous red background. Rena stands in the air, surrounded by stretched figures, against a chaotic background of red and black stripes, which creates a sense of conflict. A close-up of Rena's hand gripping her sword tightly as it strikes, sparks flying suggests a fierce battle. Rena's fierce gaze meets the viewer, her weapon at the ready, amidst a surge of power that lights up her face. Rena's portrait is elegantly framed, and text identifying her as the last of the Grail lineage sets the tone for legacy and destiny. Rena stands at the entrance to a dark portal of fire, her face turned to the side, hinting that she is about to face something monumental. A menacing figure with glowing eyes beckons while the text beckons Ren to come closer, creating an eerie invitation. The area is shrouded in mist, with ghostly figures and text recalling five long-dead kings, hinting at Rena's arrival at a place of considerable past. In a dusty room, a woman in a ball gown, her face a mix of curiosity and fear, confronts a dark presence, asking for her identity with a sword at the ready. A tall figure shrouded in darkness, eyes burning like coals, asserts his ancestral rights to the woman, 
speaking in a voice that seems to come from the depths of time itself. From the shadows, the creature orders the woman to show remorse, its eyes piercing the darkness, an unspoken power behind its curt demand. A woman stands on the edge of an abyss, the abyss below her, and the entity proclaims its dominion over the dead, its voice echoing around her. The woman questions the value of a kingdom filled with ghosts, a surprised scowl crossing her face as she addresses the void below her. With a determined gaze, she declares that the world above her belongs to the living, defying the darkness with her steadfast stance. Ghostly figures with eyes glowing with an otherworldly light surround her, dismissing her claims with a possessive line that seems to whisper an ancient rite. Time is on the ghostly creature's side as they remind the woman of their eternal patience by surrounding her with their eternal clock. An abomination without eyes and a nose appears, a tangled mass of horror, its mere presence a silent cry that chills the bones. A regal shadow stands against the twisted trees, its first cry piercing the silence, commanding attention with a presence that is both terrifying and haunting. In a stunning night scene, a chained figure sits on a throne, skeletal branches trailing behind it like an ominous crown. His face is hidden, a harbinger of foreboding. A woman with a choker and flowers on her dress stands in the dark, opposite the figure. She asks why the king's men cannot see the truth. The person occupying the throne, a sorrowful entity, declares his inability to face the world directly, implying a curse or a form of penance. The woman challenges the essence, asking why she adorns herself with beauty, if she only hears mournful sounds that hint at the contradiction in her actions. The essence explains the double burden of grief, to mourn what is most regretted and to wear the beauty as a punishment, offering a deeper narrative of loss and consequences. The scene widens to reveal a woman in a desolate landscape, facing a shadowed figure on a throne. The bubble means that their collective mourning is well known. The entity, revealed to be bound and faceless, ominously informs the princess that her fate is already known, hinting at the impending tragedy. The princess is depicted in battle, her dress torn and stained, representing the struggle or confrontation that took place, a testament to her resilience or despair. A bright flash of light is compared to a blow to a sleeping heart, indicating a moment of awakening or an important revelation. Finally, the hand drops a glowing sphere onto a dark surface, accompanied by text that speaks of consulting the whisperings of the heart before making a key decision. Reina, a girl with piercing eyes and pink hair, stands adorned with an elaborate necklace. The caption reads like a foreboding whisper that the king's heart is preparing after his first cry. A dark castle appears beyond the twisted trees, a stunning sight. The words horribly hint that a secret heart is hidden in her depths. The brainless abomination screams into the silence, her scream vividly represented by the word scream above her gaping mouth. Rena's eyes burn with determination, her stance withstanding the gust of wind, ready to face the unseen threat in the strong wind. Standing in front of the creepy undead army, Rena looks at the castle. The text ominously notes that the closer you are to the castle, the thicker the ranks of the dead. Rena's eyes, wide and intense, reflect a quiet desire to pass unnoticed, but the text reveals that the path is too narrow for stealth. Rena descends into the depths of the castle with her sword drawn. The surrounding text heightens the tension by asserting that the road is too narrow. In the thick of battle, Rena stands firm as monstrous creatures pounce on her. The tension is palpable because it is surrounded. A close-up shows Rena's shocked face. The only word, what?, captures her surprise when she witnesses an unexpected event. The creature's roar fills the stage as Rena engages in combat against the unrelenting undead, punctuated by the sound of the action. Rena stands confidently in the midst of a horde of defeated enemies, declaring that her path is cleared by their defeat. Her demeanor is poised, undaunted by the danger she faces, her sword at her side as evidence of her victory. Rin, framed against the background of a fiery sky blocked by a darkened sun, looks contemplative and distant. His bow at the ready, hinting at the severity of the battles he has seen and those yet to come, he is silhouetted as a lone figure against a vast, burning backdrop. In the close-up, Rin's expression is serious, his concentration evident as he stares ahead. He prepares an arrow, the details of his form showing signs of belonging and readiness, his gaze fixed on unseen challenges. Rena looks up with a mixture of surprise and recognition in reaction to Rin's shot. The text suggests a moment of unexpected help, 
hinting at an alliance or twist in their shared narrative. A smile graces Rena's face as she acknowledges Rin's help, the warmth of her expression contrasting with the dangerous surroundings. The dialogue shows her gratitude, suggesting that Rin's actions were not only helpful, but kind. Rin smiles gently, confident. The text adds a layer to his character, implying nobility or honor, his calmness showing that he is an honest man. Viewing the chaotic scene from above, Rin's pose is commanding. He is a strategist who observes the consequences of his actions. His dialogue implies a complex relationship with the unfolding events and those who participate in them. Rin is confused as the text implies that he is hearing unexpected or disturbing news. His composure drops slightly, indicating a change in history or a challenge to his expectations. Rin stands firm, bow in hand, declaring that their next move will not be towards the castle. His determination is evident, his profile set against the backdrop of their recent conflict, hinting at strategic decisions prompted by developing events. The conversation continues with a question, perhaps from a companion asking the direction of their journey. The speaker's uncertainty is evident, contrasting with Rin's earlier determination and indicating a twist in their plans. Rina looks up intently, insisting that you listen carefully to her words. Her pink hair frames her determined face and her red eyes glow brightly. Rin looks concerned as she states that they are on their way to the trophy. He has a determined look, his dark eyes showing a hint of worry under his furrowed brows. A group of people stand in the dark cave looking at Rin and another man standing at the ready, their expressions serious and focused on the task at hand. Reyna, smiling confidently, comments on someone's trustworthiness and obedience. Her eyes sparkle with mischief, indicating that she is pleased with the situation. Amidst the chaotic scene, Rena questions what's going on, asking if they're corpses, her eyes wide in shock and a look of urgency on her face. In close-ups, Rena's eyes represent a moment of realization or shock, while the exclamation point symbolizes her sudden surprise or insight. In the heat of the moment, Rena is stunned by the unexpected event, with only her alarmed eyes and the bottom of her bladder visible. Determined, Rena declares the situation Seal of the North, her gaze alert and full of knowledge of what that means. The scene cuts to a larger perspective where the group can be seen from behind looking at the open cave. Someone points to Rena, who can be seen standing up on the ledge. Rena's face is shown in close-up, her eyes wide in shock or realization, reflecting the seriousness of the situation as she looks at something disturbing or important. In a close-up of Ren's intense drama, her gaze is determined and she shouts the order, Fire! The urgency of her order is palpable, reflecting the tension of the situation. Rena stands on a cliff looking down at a legion of soldiers prepared for battle. The stage is ignited by the fiery glow of a giant Zero-One looming in the background, a symbol of the coming confrontation. The battle is in full swing, and Reyna is in the middle of it. She confronts the monstrous creatures with a fierce expression on her face that emphasizes the seriousness of the fight. One creature is already in her hands, subdued by her power. With an arrow fired and a grim determination on her face, Reyna charges into battle. The text reflects a critical moment. I am being targeted, hinting at her as a focus of enemy aggression. A man stands amidst the chaos, his face showing worry and fear. Arrows rain down around him as he seems to contemplate the unfolding violence with a heavy heart. A tall figure stands in front of Rena, her eyes wide with shock and possibly betrayal. The words, Father, you have come to kill me, spill out, revealing the deep personal conflict at the heart of this epic struggle. Woe to Renu, who is preparing against the onslaught. The arrows fall like a deadly downpour, and she stands resolute, a lone figure against the odds. Rena stands in the vortex, eyes wide and focused. She boldly exclaims, her words, everyone here, hangs in the air, which translates as, everyone go here, as if calling or commanding a group. Surrounded by the chaotic scene, Rena looks steadfast and poised. She is at the center of the vortex, the creatures descending on her as she radiates calm defiance, the sound of their approach rendered as okay, reverberating around her. In a dynamic stance, Rena wields her weapon with intense concentration. Her strike is powerful and accurate, cutting through her foe. The impact is displayed as a sharp AUF, indicating the force of the collision. Rena slams the creature hard, her movement so fast that it creates a shockwave shown as TJ. 
The force of her action causes the opponent to stagger, highlighting her strength and skill in combat. Rena's father stands firm, his face stern and tense against the fiery chaos. His gaze is commanding, suggesting that he is an authoritative and commanding figure amidst the turmoil. Finding himself among the undead, his father's concern grows when he overhears him pondering his situation. He says, What? Zatrialsia among the dead, which translates as, What? Lost among the dead. Amid the blur of traffic, panic sets in as the father asks, Where's she going? Or where did she go? Shows a moment of confusion and concern over Rena's whereabouts as chaos engulfs the scene. The father's voice cuts through the din. Your excellence, more dead are approaching, which translates to, Your excellence, more dead are coming. His warning is clear and forceful, adding to the tension in the ongoing struggle. Sweat beads on the father's forehead as he looks stunned by the situation. His wide eyes reflect growing fear as the reality of their dire situation sinks in. In the close-up, the father's profile is carved with anxiety. His lips part as if to say or command, the tension of the moment reflected in his furrowed brow and the shadows playing across his face. Rena stands at the entrance to the cave, peering into the darkness where the monstrous figures lurk. Her facial expression is hidden, but the pose indicates readiness for the upcoming battle. In the close-up, Rena's face is determined, her eyes blazing with fervent determination. Her pink hair and elaborate uniform shine in the invisible light. A man in a black uniform talks to another in red, his face half-shaded, showing a confident smile. He addresses the other as his aide-de-camp, his posture relaxed but commanding. The same man's face is now shown in detail, his serious expression as he says, I have to go somewhere, hinting at a very important mission calling him away. The dramatic shot shows a grand, castle-like structure atop a steep cliff, shrouded in clouds and a reddish sky. The atmosphere is full of tension and an imminent event. Rena, who appears small against the vast landscape, is approached by a man on horseback, while red-uniformed soldiers stand in the background, watching the scene unfold before them. The man on the horse addresses Rena, saying she is injured, but downplays the severity of her wound, perhaps to placate her or downplay her abilities. Looking at the man in profile, he speaks with a tone of frustration, contrasting a man who has charged into battle with a man who looks sad, perhaps lamenting a strategic error. Rena is standing in front of the man with a serious and slightly raised face, there is a moment of uncertainty as she asks if he is going to kill her, her eyes searching his for the answer. The man in red stands alone with a stern look on his face as he counsels one to avoid foolish actions if one wishes to live with a lesson or warning to heed. A young man sitting and looking contemplative expresses a desire for a life filled with meaning that transcends mere existence. A determined young woman named Rena vows to live up to her given name, demonstrating a strong sense of identity and purpose. In a tense scene, a figure whispers ominously about ending something, intent hanging heavy in the air. The troops rush forward with a sense of urgency and panic, their expressions conveying fear and determination amidst the chaos. Amidst the conflict, Rena opens the action with a powerful weapon strike, demonstrating her agility. A man, perhaps Rena's father, vehemently protests the use of seemingly unethical tactics, his face showing betrayal and anger. Rena confronts a terrifying opponent, her posture tense and ready as the chaos of battle rages around them. The encounter is brutal as Rena engages in melee combat with a creature whose every move suggests a dance of death. Rena delivers a quick, decisive strike at the shadowy figure, her determination clear in the heat of the frenzied melee. Rena, eyes full of determination, prepares to deliver the main blow, symbolizing a critical moment in her struggle. Rena's father stands calmly with a serious expression on his face, preparing for what is about to happen. He seems calm but determined, his hand poised for action. Rena looks at her father, pleading in her eyes and posture. She seems to be reasoning with him, perhaps trying to avert a bleak situation. In a sudden burst of action, Rena's father dodges the attack, his face a mask of concentration and surprise. The attack on him is sharp and brutal. Rena stands her ground her eyes glowing with an eerie light. She looks confident, even mocking, as if enjoying the chaos unfolding around her. With a sweeping gesture, Rena's father declares another failed attempt on his life, standing tall against the background of broken expectations and betrayal. Rena's shocked and vulnerable father realizes the depth of the situation. 
His face shows a moment of betrayal, a combination of disbelief and suffering. In a dynamic scene, Rena moves quickly, her actions causing her father to lose his balance, his fall dramatic against a blood-red backdrop. Rena's father's face is etched with fear, sweat forming on his forehead as he faces the unseen horror, his eyes wide and his mouth open. A close-up hand gesture means a sharp, quick movement, perhaps a signal to attack or defend, the action frozen in a moment of tension. Rena is seen from below, looking down with intense eyes, suggesting that she holds the upper hand. The perspective gives a sense of her dominance in the confrontation. In the first image, Rena's father looks on with alarm and surprise as he notices that Rena's hand looks very wrong. He comments on the unnatural appearance of her hand. Next, Rena seems calm and confident, and with a slight smile tells her father that she has decided to reveal him. After that, the action unfolds, where Rena makes a quick and decisive move, throwing her father to the ground in a smooth motion. In the next shot, Rena is standing over her father, who is kneeling and looking at her. She calmly declares that she does not plan to kill him until a certain military campaign is over. Rena's father is then seen with a humble expression on his face, reflecting on the start of the disturbing events. Looking at the night sky, Rena's ominous silhouette can be seen from behind. She declares that she always intended to play with him. In the close-up, Rena's face is full of mysterious intensity as she looks down, her red eyes suggestive of hidden knowledge or intent. The scene pans to Rena standing over her father, who is crumpled on the ground. She asks why they became the way they are now. The gruesome image shows a horde of emaciated zombie-like creatures emerging from a pit, emphasizing the sense of despair and terror. Finally, Rena's father is shown looking sad, haunted by the fact that they killed their own children, revealing a deeper layer of tragedy in their story. In the dimly lit scene, there are silhouettes of figures, between which a shadow or an object seems to hang, creating an ominous atmosphere. The text below, in an elegant frame, suggests a gloomy or pensive mood. A silhouette with horn-like protrusions is visible on top of a wall or rampart. The atmosphere is eerie, and the figure seems to be watching or preparing to do something with foreboding or determination. Rena stands amidst the desert landscape, looking ahead with a determined expression on her face. She humorously reflects on the irony of how many people have rejected their own offspring. Rena's father stands with a stern, determined face, bruised and cut. His dialogue conveys a sense of understanding as he doesn't see Ren as a monster or a devil, but perhaps something else. Rena is seen with a stunned expression, her eyes wide and bright. She seems to remark in disbelief that someone is just a common coward. The scene shows Rena standing with her back to her father. A conversation involves an acknowledgement of the truth between them, perhaps including awareness or consent. In a darker setting, Rena's father seems to be talking to her, saying that the title of monster suits her better. This moment is intense and personal because it feels contemplative or accusatory. Rena kneels before her father in a submissive or defeated pose, reinforcing the sense of hierarchy or obedience in their relationship. Rena's father, in a dominant position, speaks of the nobility of bowing only to a monster, which may suggest a moment of recognition or revelation about their relationship or Rena's nature. A close-up of Rena shows her distressed face, her eyes filled with complex emotions, perhaps signaling a turning point or a deep realization of her story. Surprised, Rena looks at the mysterious ring that emits a purple glow, her exclamation signaling the start of an unexpected event. Seized by an invisible force, Rena's face is one of shock as she is pushed back, her panicked scream reflecting the urgency of the moment. A sly smile spreads across the man's face as he approaches the purple light to make sure the unfolding events will be to his satisfaction. Sitting high, Rena's father looks down on the battle-torn landscape, the seriousness of the situation reflected in his stance. Rena hangs upside down, motionless against the background of dark curtains, hinting at the dramatic turn of her fortunes. In the heat of battle, Ruvid channels powerful energy through his weapon, slicing through the air with ferocious determination. Despite the weariness that marks his features, Ruvid stands steadfast in front of Rena's father, arguing passionately to continue the fight. The father, whose face is marked by the trials of war, calmly asserts the need for retreat, hinting at the wisdom born of experience. Defiance burns in Ruvid's eyes as he vehemently protests against any idea of retreat, his determination as fiery as the energy surrounding his blade.
Rena stands amidst the maelstrom of chaos, a man's hand supporting her from behind. Her eyes are closed. She appears unconscious or deeply distressed, perhaps wounded. A figure on horseback cradles Reyna, addressing her as Your Highness, and expressing regret for what appears to be a serious and urgent situation. A soldier sees Rena being taken away on horseback. He acknowledges her nobility with respect, expressing what appears to be a farewell or acknowledgement of her status. The man with Rena on his horse speaks to an invisible speaker who declares that the castle is beginning to collapse, prompting a startled and urgent response from him. The castle, now in ruins, can be seen in the background as the soldier reports his death. His message was met with shock and silence. A stern order is issued to turn the earth and find survivors, indicating a search or rescue mission after a disaster, perhaps the fall of the castle. The scene is frantic as the soldier begins digging through the rubble, symbolizing the desperate search for life amid the ruins. Reyna's father stands resolute in the face of devastation, pondering what to do next amid the aftermath of the destruction. He makes a grim discovery. Where the castle once stood is now a swamp, and all the dead have disappeared, suggesting a mysterious or supernatural event. In a commanding tone, Reyna's father orders them to continue their search, refusing to give up despite the bleak circumstances and obvious loss. In the dark cave, soldiers dressed in red look around, one of whom says they searched for five days without finding anything. A man in a black and red uniform touches his chin thoughtfully, lamenting the need to return after a long search without results. As dusk falls on the desolate landscape, one character notices the absence of the Eastern Army, leading to the realization that only their group has survived. Amidst the fire and devastation, the leader orders his troops to cease their efforts and prepare to declare the victory of the North. Exhausted and battered, the soldiers respond with silent desperation to the command to stop searching as lightning rips through the sky. Holding hands, Rena's father is helped by fellow soldiers as they walk through the area with their wounded comrades. Rena watches the aftermath where many soldiers lie wounded and the gravity of the situation is in the air. The silver-haired man ponders whether the North has indeed returned empty-handed, a mixture of curiosity and concern on his face. The group stands in the ruined castle, and Rena listens as her father confirms that they are the only ones who came back alive, but that someone else is out there. The man's face contorted in shock and disbelief when he heard that not everyone had died as was believed to hint at an unsolved mystery. A man named Rin, dressed in military uniform, stands next to his horse against a background of fiery chaos, while soldiers behind them prepare for what appears to be a serious battle. Rin appears in close-up with a stern look on his face as the speech bubble emphatically proclaims him as Hero of the East, Rin Avenger. In the cobbled square, Rin and his troops, mounted and on foot, encounter a lone figure in white. The text in the scene foreshadows the expected confrontation, hinting that Rin brings something important. Rin can be seen confidently tossing a bag of gold coins to the ground in front of him against a dramatic red sky. Falling coins imply a transaction or challenge. A figure dressed in white, suspected to be Rena's father, suspiciously examines the scattered coins, asking if they are all gold, indicating doubt and intrigue regarding Rin's proposal. The narrative changes when a regal-looking character, perhaps a higher authority, reacts with shock, suggesting that Rin's actions were unexpected and possibly forbidden. An elegant figure in white, holding a cane, comments on the beauty of the military expedition with a hint of sarcasm, perhaps mocking the struggles they faced. A discussion ensues between the man in white and Rin that revolves around the hardships of the army from the east and their time in the province, revealing a history of challenges. Rin stoically replies, 11 days, revealing the length of their arduous mission, while the man in white stands behind him, holding the gold piece up to the light, appraising its value. The final exchange reveals a discrepancy in the perception of time spent in hardship, with the man in white saying, 7 days, perhaps contradicting Rin's earlier statement, adding tension to their discourse. The silver-haired man reflects on how time flows differently for everyone, alluding to a personal sense of isolation with a contemplative, however, this person reflects on the return from the North, which took place four days before he was expected in the East, and reflects on the disappointment of returning empty-handed. In a dimly lit scene, two soldiers discuss a bleak discovery, a black swamp where they hoped to find dragons or a king's heart, but found neither. 
The silver-haired one speculates if the seat was empty due to someone already taking what they were looking for, hinting at a secret or competition. Wide-eyed, the same character is shocked to realize that someone managed to get the king's heart in just a day, marking a significant and surprising event. A man in a red military uniform curses, his expression contorted with anger and disappointment, as if something or someone has eluded him or caused him great trouble. The silver-haired man addresses the two soldiers, nonchalantly pointing out that someone is standing behind them, hinting at a presence that has gone unnoticed. One of the soldiers panics and despairs when he finds himself face to face with a menacing, swamp-like entity, its dark presence overwhelming. The same soldier stands stunned and in denial as a glowing figure appears behind him, perhaps indicating a supernatural or unexpected turn of events. The pink-haired Rena looks surprised and worried while sitting on a barrel surrounded by people, as if she's just heard some shocking news or is in a sudden situation. In the stillness of the night, Rena stands holding a ladle, the moon illuminating her form. She seems to be waiting for someone or something with a subtle hint of anticipation in her posture. Rena is caught off guard by the sudden return of her father, a man marked by life's experience and hardships. The warmth in her eyes contrasts with his tired demeanor as she greets him with a simple, hopeful question. Her father's face is covered with exhaustion and the scars of past troubles. He looks up, a mixture of relief and disbelief on his face, as if he's seen a ghost, or perhaps something even less likely. The atmosphere becomes cold and dark as the father recounts with horror how he witnessed Rena's fatal fall, his voice mixed with pain and despair, the memories vivid and unbearable. A monstrous creature looms in the darkness, its eyes shining like ominous rubies. This ominous scene sets the scene for something ancient and terrifying, a mystery perhaps best left unsolved. With eerie calm, Rena faces the beast, her eyes matching his infernal glare. She stands firm, her resolve firm as she counters the creature's insinuation with a simple, no devil. The air crackles with tension as her father, stunned, demands to know what trick Rena used to defy death. His stance is assertive, the need for answers etched into every line of his body. In an authoritative tone, Rena's father orders to show the heart that she took from the Avenger of the Southern Lands. His voice is firm, the man is used to being obeyed, his desire for validation is clear. Rena answers with a calm smile, ready to agree. Her grace is steadfast, even in spite of her father's high demands. The servant bows deeply, holding up a pillow on which is fixed a heart like a precious stone, a sign of victory and dark deeds accomplished. In a dark red room hovers a magic ring with an elven script that glows ominously. The caption sarcastically mocks, hinting at an underestimated inner strength. A stern man in military garb dismisses the ring as unworthy of royalty, showing a mixture of shock and disdain as he stands amidst the tall spires of what appears to be a majestic castle. A younger man with silver hair and royal attire addresses someone named Rubel, questioning their attention to biographical details, hinting at an important detail of noble birth being missed. A shimmering light casts a heart-shaped gem in a dark room, surrounded by decorative frames that speak of the king's hidden heart, hinting at the royal secret hidden deep within the castle. Among the icy floors of the palace, a military man with a look of disbelief on his face announces that a thorough investigation has already taken place, while a priest and a younger man stand nearby. The silver-haired young man tells us that there has been a key exchange. Rena has married the silver-trimmed key, as the priest presents a soft box. An intricately patterned silver key with a bright gemstone in the center rests on the pillow, shedding light around it, symbolizing the key that unlocks the mysterious heart of the king's legacy. In the emotional climax, the soldier's face contorts in shock. Rain pours down as he faces the incomprehensible truth, and fear and disbelief are reflected in his eyes. Rena finally stands resolute as the warlord falls to his knees, echoes of defeat and realization echoing through the great halls of the castle. The silver-haired man confidently announces the decision, his face a combination of relief and triumph, as if an important matter has been decided in the royal court. A blue banner emblazoned with a bold emblem flies aloft as a command is given to report a visitor to the main palace. Rena stands even, her gaze intense and red, bearing a statement from the south and Rena's night. A man is kneeling seemingly in despair, surrounded by shadows. The text hints that he's going through a difficult experience, returning from hell. Rena's father looks exhausted, his eyes wide with pain. 
He admits that he has lost everything. Rena finally looks down with an enigmatic smile, telling her father that he has failed again. Her eyes still glow red, reflecting complex emotions.